prayer coming in subhanallah so law that's deep i should have let that dawn play yeah i know yeah i know but the more that i know the more i stay left surrounded by no dreams and bad habits the happenings and not mastering my mathematics you heard what happened the only year well that's tragic eight out of ten of us savages yeah that's average the aftermath mad drastic so talk shit and actually get your ass kicked I'm that classic I'm like a barber to these rap bastards I beg his pardon, they part him in an orderly fashion Not your ordinary hustler that's more than just trapping I'm escaping these mental cages, they want me trapped in A new shipment is in and I'm the captain Let's crack this bitch open and get it cracking But I don't know nothing, go ahead and ask him The only thing I say to a cop is I don't know what happened He ain't have no evidence, but you thought he did Started running your mouth and called a big gun to say that it's like the more I say no, the more she say yes. It's like the more that I know, the more I say less. It's like the more that I grow, the more that they test. But I know, and I know, but I know, the more I say less. They say actions speak louder than words, baby, and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show. Surrounded by dope fiends and crack addicts In my hood, you only as good as your last package Stealth moves got me sitting on hella well I only deal with top shelf shit that's hella sell Don't put in work unless it's worth it Too many niggas riding behind hearses to get their last words in They act like they ride a die and put that work in But as soon as it's time to ride, they make it swerving I seen plenty for when that pressure's applied I miss the no fucks given, I never complied I know they talk shit just to get a reply I get it, I'm fly I'm with it, so try I kill it, you die just cause you living a lie Seen a lifestyle, I thought you could give it a try Snicks on the kid that was giving you vibes Got crossed on it, you talk, he wasn't going to say that It's like, the more I say no, the more she say yes That's why, the more that I know, the more I say yes the more that I grow, the more that they test. But I know, and I know, but I know, the more I say less. the Lord I Kim. Give me a second, people. So we can share and send out our own notifications. Because if I didn't send out my own notifications, probably nobody would be watching us. Yeah. 
top auto detailing the lower vibration in this realm needs us in consistent in, in, in constant state of fear hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on give me a second give me a second here we go let me read that let me read that the law of vibration in this realm needs us in a constant state of fear that's their energy source adrenochrome is real adrenochrome is from a black child they call it is walnut sauce protect your children because they are god thank you family thank you for sponsoring this war early got to get a keep doing allah's work highs upon allah tell y'all something right i'm not here to tell nobody what to believe in but whatever you believe in believe in it because i'm gonna tell you something we living in a day and a time where evil is all over there is a clear clear war on our children there's a clear war on our children our children is invited and invited to the most evil. Let me tell you something, right? When I was growing up, they had a such thing as rated R, PG-13, you know, things that was for kids. When I was growing up, if a female put on a mini skirt, a mini skirt that was too low on her thighs, she was considered to be a skeezer. In today's time, they got us living backwards. Juan, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Hit him in the head with them. I promise you. I solemnly swear by every breath that Allah, God, the Most High, whatever you pray to, whoever you pray to, keep on praying. Because in this day and time, you're going to need them. I will not sit in front of this camera and dumb you down. I will not. If you put rainbows inside my comment section, I will block you. If you put rainbows in my comment section, I will block you. And it's just that simple. Stop playing with me. I will not dumb you down. I will use every breath. I'm, I'm not saying that we won't be entertaining each other. I'm not saying that we're not going to laugh and joke. But I guarantee you that I did not come here to mislead you. I did not come here to watch you walk like that kid always talking about, you know, the little bad kid running around in the living room by the coffee table. And you see the edge of the coffee table, and you know Shorty gonna hit his head. You know Shorty gonna hit his head on his coffee table. You know it. And everybody sitting back now, nah, I'm not gonna watch you bump your head. If I could pick you up, I'm gonna pick you up. It is what it is. Shall we begin? I see the FBI agents is in here hard. You know you gotta be powerful. Right? Y'all look at the y'all look at the thumbnail to this live. You see what you see on that thumbnail? They know this is gonna be they know this is gonna be powerful. They know this is gonna be powerful. Revelations is here. It ain't hard to tell what page I'm on. It ain't hard to see the times that we living in. It ain't hard to see the times that we living in. Now we have to be the highest version, the highest level of ourselves. You know, there's a saying in the Quran where Allah says, do you think that you will be left alone? Was saying that you believe and you will not be tested in the lost talk. And he says, for surely, this fucking fly, there's a fly in here 
I'm telling you, it bit my foot earlier. I've been trying to catch this fly. It just bit me on the back of my neck when I catch this fly. When I catch you, oh my God. When I catch, when I catch you, bite me again. That damn fly just bit me in the back of my neck. I think that's, I, yo, I think, I, I, I think Fauci sent that fly up in here. Bill Gates sent that fly up in here. Yo, that fly just bit me in the back of my neck. It bit me on my foot earlier and I couldn't catch it. Like, all right. I want y'all to understand something, right? Let me say that again. Let me start all over. A law says, do you think that you will be left alone with saying that you believe and will not be tested? For surely, I've tested those before you so much that they prayed and begged God, when will the help of God come? And he said, surely the help of God is near. Some of us ain't been tested, battle tested in our spirituality. Some of us ain't been battle tested with our wives and our children. You live in a life that's smooth. You live in a smooth life right now. It's time for you to high, that, to elevate yourself to your highest level, to your highest power. Because if you don't, you are not going to be strong enough to survive what's to come. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's demons lurking. And the crazy part about it is, in this day and time that we living in, when I was younger, right? Y'all following me? When I was younger, we used, to call, we used to call ourselves the gods in the earths. The gods in the earths. So now... 20 years later, 30 years later, how did this satanic system figure out how to chat, how to turn our children into demons full fledged? How did they figure out how to flip the switch? Even though we was gods and earths, we still got busy. We still bust our gun. But we knew after we got busy, there was repentance. We knew after we got busy, it was like, all right, did we have to really, really go there? When our brothers got into some shit and it got ugly, we went out there and got busy with them. Ain't no if and we ain't asking no questions. If it's on, it's life and death, it's on, it's on. After the fact, we sitting down, we having a discussion. Yo, what was that all about? You get back to the righteous side. In today's time, there is no righteous side. Your righteous. To see the war, the, the war of today, yo, the crazy part about it is some people believe in heaven and hell. I, I specifically, there's no way in hell that the foul people of this earth is going to live as foul as they is and not going to pay. You not that, that I believe that you're not going to answer on the other side. Oh, I believe you're going to answer. But see, here's the trick, right? If there is a God, right, which I believe in God and I do believe in heaven and hell. I don't care what tricks they tell you. Oh, oh, you can't go to hell. You only die one time. I watch my plants die every season and come back the next season. The same exact way. I believe in reincarnation. But here's the thing, right? In the Bible, it tells you that Adam and Eve was tempted with the apple, right? Adam and Eve was tempted with the apple, the apple, the forbidden fruit, the forbidden fruit, right? In the Bible, it teaches you that the shaitan, the shaitan, the one who whispers, the one who whispers is your enemy. He whispers into your heart. Things that you know you ain't got no business doing. And then you answer the call of the shaitan. And then sometimes we do things that we ain't got no business doing and we feel bad. We don't need the Bible or the Quran to tell us that we did something we ain't have no business doing. You feel the guilt. Sometimes you feel guilty when you eat a piece of cake because you know you shouldn't eat it because there's levels to this. These people don't trick you out of your spirituality. They tricked you out of your spirituality. So now that we are all sinning, the way that you die is the way that you're going to be raised. The way that you die, the state, if you die in the process of committing a sin, 
and you don't have the chance to repent, when you are raised in front of your Lord, you are raised in that state. They got us living consistently in a state of sin as if we don't have no respect for the laws of the universe, for the laws of nature, for the laws of the most high. We are breaking every rule and every commandment. And the crazy part about it is you got to ask yourself a question. Who's promoting all this, all this evil to us? I want to say something, but I know it's going to get me in troubles. And I don't really want to get into any troubles around here. But when Jesus left here, he left some enemies here. When Jesus left this world, he left on some unfinished business. And I'm going to tell you something, right? I'm going to tell you a little secret. Moses came to teach you the laws of God. Moses was a murderer who repented. But he came and he taught you the laws of God. Jesus came to teach you to repent. Because when he come back, there is no more repenting. Each prophet was sent to a nation. The prophet Muhammad was sent to all nations. I'm not going to get too much more into this religious stuff because I try not to. But I need you to understand whatever you practice, whatever you believe in, ask God. They can't angels around you because there's nothing but demons and demon time. I'm asking you and I'm telling you to pray more. Because while your children is going outside, when I used to go outside, mama used to pray for me. Because when I got outside, the streets was praying on me. Well, I got to put that in subtitles or something. When I used to go outside, Mama used to pray for me because she knew there was dudes out outside that had guns for me. When I was outside, the streets used to pray for me. Now, there's levels to the evils that we have to face. The food in the supermarket, wicked. I sat back and watched a video with a girl reading ingredients from overseas in ketchup. And the ingredients that we have in America, not the same. Not the same. Matthew Young, come through the door, highs. <laughs> the door of righteousness is the only door I'm walking through. Dark home crop, show out, show, show out, ta uncle highs. He's speaking facts. Thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. Shout out to the 3,500 people in the building. We got 3,500 people in the building. Hit that like button. As a matter of fact, sponsor this wall. Playtime is over. My enemies are strong. My enemies are strong. My team got to be strong. Everybody that's watching me, drop a dollar. A dollar ain't much there. Everybody that's watching me, drop a dollar in my super chat, man. A dollar. Heavy Andy. Yo, Haas. You still looking for new recruits for your A team? And I think you should visit... East New York, there's a lot of young boys that's ready to crash out for a bag. Oh, believe me, I'm definitely am. I have no choice. Mm -hmm. Callis Davis, thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. I have no choice. My enemies are strong. And we're going to get to that. Oh, we're going to get to that. My enemies are strong. And they, like, first of all, you got to understand something, man. 
Evil is ganging up against righteousness. Evil is ganging up against righteousness. See, the thing which y'all got to understand is, in this world, Mikey, thank, 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 thank you, thank you, appreciate you, family. Leonardo, you schooling them tonight, bro. Much love from the, um, the, the best state ever, Florida. Shout out to Florida. Thank you, family, appreciate you. Supporting your work. Joyful parent, thank you, appreciate you. Chris Tells, thank you, family, appreciate you. Understand something, right? Juan, the things me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Troy Carter, nah, my dude, not a dollar. Every Everybody dropped $2. That's what's up. <laughs> Clark, thank you, family, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Oh, okay. 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 They talking back to me. Listen, man. Listen, man. I kind of lost my train of thought for a second. I want you to understand something, right? When you analyze my struggle, my pain, my hustle, right? How people try to, how, how I had to use the internet, like how uh, Dr. Umar Johnson said, Dr. Umar Johnson, I'm gonna put some respect on your name. This internet became my therapy. Cause the one thing that unites us all around the world is pain. There's more people suffering more people hurting, more people in poverty than they are rich. And we like to hide and run from that. One thing I didn't do on this internet, I gave y'all all my pain. I shared every bit of it to show you the realness with me. Bitch, I got you. I got your bitch ass. I got, I, I got him. I got him. Look, look. Got you. Got you. Look. I told y'all, told y'all, got him, got you, word to my mother, revenge is the, yo, revenge is the best dish eating cold, got him, playing with me, cannibal cage, sound wavy Sony, Sony, thank you family, uh oh, uh oh, Daniel Sanchez, thank you for sponsoring this war. Dwayne Lemon. My nigga Major Rant. Salute. My brother Major Rant. What's good, boy? Called by Grace. Been subscribed to 20 since 2017. Keep it up. Tay. Tay Moolah. Okay, okay. All for the message, brother. Jaquan. Truba, I hope I pronounced that right. Mula Mike. Sinatra TV. How do you deal with the pain losing in loved ones? CC Biz. Day Pro, let me answer that question. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to hold off for a second so I could talk. Let me answer that question. I just had to keep going. I had to keep going, and even still, the pain never stopped, right? See, Umar Johnson tried to play me out of position by telling y'all, if I don't get back to the topic, right, with his boule ass, he boule, right? He, 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 if I don't get back to the topic, I'm a hypocrite. But why would you want me to get back on a topic that damn near destroyed me? Why would you want me on a topic that damn near destroyed me? Why would you want me on a topic where all of my friends abandoned me? And even still, right, I'm going to explain certain things to y'all, right? In certain details, I, I got some videos coming to my Patreon. For all my Patreons that, that, that's been patiently waiting, I got some videos because I'm going to get really, really, really personal on my Patreon. A lot of things that I'm blotting out and blotting out and blotting out. See, that live that I did, I needed the people to understand something, right? I have friends that was in jail and... A lot of dudes wasn't in the streets. Some of these dudes was in jail 
and it wasn't paying attention to the to, to the internet. I had a lot of friends that was in jail that was doing a lot of time. Some of them came home. So some people didn't know what was going on with KRS One, right? With him calling me a fag and protecting Africa Bambada, aka Africa Epstein. So now that I let everybody know, right? There's no more tears. I learned the life now. At this level and stage in my life, I have to remove my emotions for, from everybody. Understand, when a judge has to pass judgment in a court, that goes even against his mother. On the day of judgment, when God has to pass judgment, the feelings is not going to be there. It's judgment. And when you at war, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, You have to separate your feelings when you realize that you're on that battlefield by yourself because the people around you pick and choose which war and which battles that they're going to fight with you. So now my whole thing is I separate myself from everybody and I'll walk alone before I walk with a coward. I'll walk alone before I walk with a coward. I'll rather invoke invoking prayers to the most high so he could keep the angels around me. Then have a fake friend walking besides me that's cool with these industry niggas that'll leave you in the streets. And it's just that simple. I don't want no smoke with everybody or anybody. But at the, at the same time, I'll take smoke with everybody and anybody. I didn't plan on living forever. And I ain't going out without a fight. The problem is, though, is it's levels to this. In order for in order for us, it's like playing Mario, right? Super Mario Bros. or one of the video games where you got to beat board after board after board after board to get to the bad guy. We on the bottom level fighting with each other. We never get to the bad guy. And at some point in time, that has to change. But now we are living in times where we're witnessing things. Well, Sometimes I'm starting to feel and believe like I am in a video game. This is the Matrix. And it's like everybody is Agent Smith. Sometimes I feel like my life is a story. And I'm writing my own chapter and everybody else in it is a demon. Sometimes I feel like that because it's like, yo, how the rest of the world don't see through the eyes that God gave me and can't see the things that's going on. You know what's crazy? You ever had somebody in your family 20 years, 30 years ago? People used to sit up there and say, yo, this cat is crazy. 20 years later, the person that everybody was calling crazy is talking about everything that was happening today. Oh, there's aliens. This nigga bugged out. Now your government telling you every day that there's aliens. I'm just giving you that for an example. We are living in serious times. Well, we don't know if the ocean is going to come wash us away, like in the prophecies in the Bible or the people of old. We don't know if fire is going to come raining on our community and the fire, yo, the dope thing about the fire, the fire loves the rich, but hate the poor. We don't know if fire is going, like in the Bible, people told you, yo, it's crazy. Sit back and really, really analyze. See through the eyes of highs. People in Hawaii, they actually get to see fire burning. Coming from the skies. This fire was vicious to the poor, but gentle to the rich. Now, if somebody would have told you a story like that, it sounded like the Bible, right? With the days of Lot. When Lot told his people that it was going to be a, a, a God's wrath on the people when he warned them 
and told his wife, don't look back. And she looked back and she turned to stone. But then I'm looking at Instagram and I'm looking at a video of a car that's melted into the cement. And then I'm looking at a video of a dog that turned to stone. And the people in the video breaking down, fire don't do that, but microwaves do. Ooh, is it real, son? Is it really real, son? Let them know it's real, son. Is it really real? Is it real or is it fake? Somebody let me know. Is the world that we live in today real or fake? When we can sit back and see a whole island get cooked, burn to death, where the poor died and the rich are still alive, and then where I'm at, coming from where I'm from, I'm from, where I'm from, you got a people celebrating the 50th year of Africa Bambada's hip hop. Where I'm from, while these people are going through prophecies, prophet sees, prophet, you know, prophet sees, My people are in Harlem celebrating the Harlem week. Oh, you love Harlem? You love Harlem? Do you really love Harlem? How much do you really, 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 really love Harlem? I mean, because y'all all out there. One minute y'all crying about the white people walking their dogs. They got their little poodles. They picking up the doo-doo. Cleaning up their neighborhood. Can't wait for you to go. Bye-bye now. This, this, this shit right here. This shit right here, nigga. This our shit right here. Yeah, they shit, right? Because y'all got the PPP money, right? Y'all got the nice Benzes in front of the building. Y'all got the nice BMWs in front of the building. But none of y'all put together y'all money because Harlem gets bread. So now y'all watching foreigners come through y'all neighborhood. Yo, and here's the crazy part about this, right? Here's the crazy. Are y'all listening? Are y'all waiting for this? The crazy part about it is, is that remember the days of when the slave master came to America and they took our land? Now, with, 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 with the, the new colonizer, what they call gentrification, they ain't taking nothing. They looking at you. Stand on the, on the, oh, yo, you got your bottle of liquor. Uh-oh, I got to take a swig for this one. I got to take a swig for this one. How's on fire tonight. You in Harlem. In front of the building, yeah, black. You know what I'm saying? He better not come through here, cause word the mother, yo, nigga, come through here, yo. It's, it's lit, it's lit, it's lit. Word up, he's a bozo. Word, word, word. Yeah. Oh, hi, hi, move, move to the side. Move to the side. Come on through, colonizer. How you doing? Nice to meet you. They just bought your property. You rolling up that blunt? Sounding stupid thinking that you're talking intellectually. Word, you know what I'm saying? Just, that was deep though. Let's get to that. <coughs> they didn't come steal your hood. They bought it legally. You have money. Your man's got money. All them niggas got money. And y'all letting strangers, stranger, there's a strange, you letting the strangers come in your community and buy it. And now they pushing you out. Now you coming back to Harlem, Harlem week visiting. It's not even yours no more. What, are the, what is the world we living in? What is the world we living in? Y'all celebrating Harlem week, Bronx day, this day, that day, while you sitting up there watch a people, a people in your land, on an island, part of America, go through doomsday. Are you not entertained? Is this is not why you're here? Oh, so now it's crazy because now picture us 2000, we 2000 years from now, we looking back. So you mean to tell me that the people, the people of America were so lost that there was floods, like the same floods that they was talking about in the days of Moses, when Moses parted the Red Sea and he walked through the sea. He parted the Red Sea. Because he had a technology that y'all can't see. The same technology we have today, Moses had something to split the sea. And when he split the sea, those who followed him drowned. Y'all just not reading in between the line because there's things that was left out in these stories. Right now, 
You are living in your own Bible. This is your own testimony. What is going to be your story? How is this story going to be written? How is your life going to play out? This is your Bible. You are in the Bible right now of 2023. And you are the people of Lot that's not listening to the calling. The trumpet is blown. The trumpet is blown. The horns, the trumpet. Donald, you know, Donald Trump, the trumpet is blown. Donald Trump is actually a part of the signs of the time in the Bible. It speaks of the trumpet being blown. I am not saying he's of God. I am saying he is a sign. And we are living in the signs of the time. So you mean to tell me when Trump was in office, he waged war on missing children, children being abducted? And us as a people, we not holding our children tight? Huh? You mean to tell me that we are living in a time, the signs of a time where grown men are scared to go outside because they don't want to go back to jail because they don't want to get caught with a gun and they don't want to shoot nobody because it ain't safe outside. But you women, Shanene, Shaniqua, Moniqua, you're sending your sons outside to an early grave. If the grown men is not safe, how are you sending the young boys out there to be hunted? The mothers in the community, you know that you couldn't take care of your children. Why are you letting your sons hump on our daughters? Knowing the struggles that you've been going through. Fathers out there, talk to your sons. It's not cool for your sons to be humping on these girls. Knowing that child support is going to be the weapon that defeats him. He will never get on his feet because every time he get an extra dollar, it will go to the court system. And he will live the majority of his life hating life. His child will be raised with resentment. I promise you I didn't come here to entertain you tonight. Matter of fact, you know what? Being that I done took this route, because I made a video where everybody disagreed with me and I don't care. Because when I see something, I see it. Watch this real careful. Hold up, hold up. Let me get the sound right. Why is the sound out? Come on, man. Why is the sound out? All right, there you go. I want y'all to listen to this real, because, yo, this is this is one of the most important topics tonight that I want every, of you men, the brothers, I pay attention. Pay attention. Matter of fact, let me catch up with the super chat tra chat real quick. Bakari, the watchman. Hi, stay on your watch, man. Yes. Demetrius Q. Washington, thank you for sponsoring this war. Love you, family. Jick, been watching and a fan for, for a while. From the from, from, from Bergen County, suburbs. Thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Max. I'm a poor man, but rich soul. Lyrics, Mr. Reality, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Anthony Parker, that fly got his snot box rocked. I hit him in his head with his head shot. Yes. How's the best out, the best out haters going to keep hating? How's his original, authentic? You can't block the sun with a, with, with a finger rock. Your snot box is my favorite slogan. The wand. John, thank you for everything. Take care of yourself as well. Keep going, Haas. We need God back in this world. Hassan. Juan. Rhode Island in the house. Much love, Poppy. Your message is strong. Much love to you, my brother. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Peace, Mitty. 
You hating the king of New York. Salute, Haas. Oh, y'all better strap on your seatbelt because it's going to get real deep with the next part of this live right here. God bless your heart, bro. I respectfully respect your message, King. Understand, may the heavens always protect you. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Everyone dropped five. Been rocking with you since 2018. As a 24-year-old, helped me through the toughest times of my life. Love you, Haas. The King's Table. Shalom, King. Let's talk. Oh, wow. Super chat going crazy tonight. The King's Table. Shalom, King. Hope I ain't miss anyone because we about to get deep. Brother Hassan, teacher, reach you always speaking very direct, not indirect. Keep up, keep it up. Very healthy and full elevation. Wise and knowledge, brother. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Chris, the child support system designed to destroy families. Yes. Mikey one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Y'all ready? Cut up here in a minute. Hey, man. I'm going to the service, though. All right, y'all. So, uh, let me get off because she said my phone is going to cut off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me play that again. For, your, for those of y'all that don't know what that is, I made a video talking about gunplay, right? How his baby mother, I told y'all she lined him. I told y'all, told about he pulled the gun out on her. Watch. So. Look at her. <laughs> That's gonna cut up here in a minute. So uh, let me get off because she said my phone is going to cut off. Okay. So. Now, when you watch that video, right? When, when you, while you're looking at that video, you see her looking over his shoulder with the most evil look. He playing the video, cool and calm. When I made my video, I didn't see this video. And if y'all want to see the full video, it's on my own, my IG page, Poppy from BX River. Now, he's sitting there playing a the video game, minding his business. She comes behind him. She comes behind him, antagonizing him. He's quiet. She tells him, your phone is about to cut off. Now he's live where people can hear and see him. Your phone is about to cut off because now she done had his phone cut off deliberately. She's being spiteful. And her statement that she said, oh, he was making noise while the baby was asleep. So she decided to go pack her bags to go to a hotel. She antagonized that man. She baited that man. And see what I want y'all to understand? Now he's in jail. With no bail. That was the setup. She set him up. Got the drop. Now, and what I, what, what I want you to understand is, right? I knew the steps and stages because I seen this shit before. With my friends. I seen shysty females. I'll give you an example, right? Back in the days when I broke up with my second baby mother, right? I had another shorty with me. She was bad, too. My daughter's mother. I got a new shorty now. Shorty bad. My baby mother drops my son off. She drops my son off. This is when I was living on Clay Ave. 
right? Drops my son off to me. She got a cousin with her. She like, yo, take him. I said, yo, I got company. Take him. I'm going out. I'm going to do my thing. I said, I don't care about that. You said you don't want no females around my son, right? Because this is kind of like fresh when we broke up. So you sure you want to leave him? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. All right, whatever. She goes downstairs. She's in front of the building. Her cousin's still upstairs. So now I start talking shit. I tell her cousin, I said, yo, I said, my shorty in the room, my shorty bad, right? I opened up the door so she could see her. I said, she bad, right? She said, wow. So now I goes downstairs to walk her cousin downstairs. And she pretty much talking fly. She going, she trying to get me mad because she going to see other dudes. But I'm done with her. When I'm done, I'm done. So I'm done with her. Shorty upstairs. So I says to her, I says, that's all right. Because my shorty upstairs and she killing you. And I said to her cousin, I said, right? My shorty killing her, right? She said, I walks in the building. I go look out the window to see if they left. My baby mother looks up. She looks up at the window. I said, oh, shit. I knew what she was doing. She called and tried to get my house raided right then and there. Told the police I pulled out guns on her. So now the SWAT team is outside my hallway. When I opened up the door, because... I looked out the window when I seen him. I said, all right, I'm going to just walk out. When I went to open up the door, my shorty grabbed me from behind so the police wouldn't shoot me. Then she got in front of me. So while the whole SWAT team's in the hallway, I said, listen, officers, this is a misunderstanding. This is my new girl. That's my old girl. She's mad because I, I'm spending time with my new girl. Pulled out her ID because I used to have her ID in my wallet. Social security card. I said, here, that's my baby mother. She's mad about her. They looked. They went ham. They went ham on her. Ham. I closed the door and laughed the rest of the night. Like, because <laughs> she got what she was looking for. But that was her trying to lock me up. When Because when a woman's fed up, when a woman is fed up, do you understand the hell that you're going to deal with? Most females, they know when they're in a relationship with a man that loves his child, because some of us love our children, that man is going to fight for his child. So now mentally, she knows the type of dude that she's dealing with. He's going to fight for his child. You ain't taking my child nowhere. Okay, watch me. Because now I'm going to bait you into a physical altercation. If you watched him, he was cool, calm, and collective. I don't hold no punches. I tell y'all. I tell on myself. The old me, the old me, with a smack thunder cat, thunder, thunder, thunder. I would have slapped thunder. Stop playing with me. She wouldn't have played with me like that. She wouldn't have. The new me, I'm going to walk out the door. I'm going to calm down. But at the same time, when you challenging me like that as a man, I'm too old to have a woman challenging me like that. When you sizing me up, that's the wrong house. Once you get to a certain age, this certain shit I'm just not going to go through. You'll be better off outside cheating on me. I'll deal with you cheating on me better than you sizing me up inside my house. So when you sit back and you analyzing brothers, I'm talking to you. Because somebody that's looking at me right now, you got, you, you got a female that's dangerous. And when y'all go to break up, shit gonna get real. Especially when, I'm not talking to you dudes. When she gonna throw your sneakers in the hallway because you living off of her section eight. I'm talking about you dudes that got your shit together. And she living with you. And she ain't got her shit figured out. And she don't, she don't pay no bills. A lot of the times, those ones, where she ain't paying the bills like that, and sometimes even the ones is, she wants to guarantee herself 
that you can't take that child from her. She wants to guarantee herself that you're going to pay child support and she wants to guarantee herself section eight. Because when a woman's fed up, she's going to put your back against the wall. You better do like Mayweather said. Are you listening to me? Mayweather said, protect yourself at all times. Protect yourself at all times because some of these females is wicked. Some of these females is wicked. Rational Minds Productions, the biggest weapon they have used is the woman against the man and vice versa. Knowing the woman raises the children, which eventually will be used as a weapon. Silent weapons for quiet wars. Rational minds. Hit them in the head with the headshot. Are you not entertained? This shit right here? You're not getting that on them other platforms. These niggas is ass backwards. It's time for some soul searching. Because I'm going to tell you something else too, right? The best feeling in the world is your woman. The best feeling in the world that a man get you can't get from nobody else is his woman. So when a man has to go out in the street and fight, and then when you got to come home and fight, your life is upside down. I can't win a war on the street if I can't win the war at home. And you women, you got to stop going to work and being polite to everybody on your job, but then coming home to your man and giving him the evil side. He gets the attitude. If I find out a dude out there cheating on my wife, cheating with my wife, my beef is with her. Unless she's one of my people's, one of my men's. But when it becomes my beef, when you cheating with my wife and you send her home to me with an attitude and I got to deal with an attitude. So now she mad at you and me. We got a problem, my nigga. Oh, right. Because some of y'all do, you, you really, really think you're going to have babies on your shorty. You're going to cheat on your shorty and you think she don't know about it and she's not going to cheat back. No, she's going to get you back. And the reason why she's still with you is because she got you back and she's getting you back. Brother Sanchez. Shout out to Brother Sanchez. She's getting you back. Do you understand the evils that you're dealing with? In order for you to survive the future, you better get your house straight. Or you better pack your bags. You ever heard that saying, I could do bad by myself? Because you can't fight at home and fight outside. You're not going to win. You are not going to win. And I'm going to talk to you like, like on some real shit. To those of y'all that's watching me, learn to say no. Learn to say no. Get your reserves down. Because you got people around you. There's a good, there's a good motherfucker watching me right now. There's a good motherfucker watching me right now. And every time you turn around, somebody's asking you for something. And they know that you at your last. And you giving them your last. You take your shirt off your back and give it to them. And they know that. Start saying no. You feed a leech, they become bigger leeches. They're going to keep on sucking you and sucking you and sucking you. They don't care about how you get to work. They don't care about that they just asked you for your lunch money. You ain't even got lunch money for the rest of the week because you gave it to them. But when times is hard and your back is against the wall, where they at? The days and the times where we getting ready to go to, you better learn when to say no. Because they don't care about your struggle. They don't care about what you're going through. They're not asking you how was your day. Get right or get left. The future where we going, if you don't have your head together, that's why I told you, right? I broke down with this Africa Bambada, KRS One. Everybody sitting up there sharing KRS One. The man called me an FBI agent. No more tears. I ain't breaking down no more. Because now I accepted the fact that people will sell you out for celebrity status. 
I asked some of these people, what would you have done if this happened to your son? Oh, he would be dead already. Oh, so it's okay that it happened to me? Good. Thank you. I could shine alone. I could do good by myself. I could do bad by myself. But me and you, it's time for us to go our separate ways. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's like me and my brothers that I grew up with. Or my friends, my childhood friends. When we got into the elevator in 1455, we all had to get off on a different floor and go through a different address door. And in life, you graduate to different levels. When you graduate to that different level, it's not that you're better than somebody else. It's mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, you're on your own. You want a quest for knowledge? Most of the time, it's on your own. In order for you to elevate, to become the highest level of yourself. In order for you to become Bruce Leroy. In order for, before you to become Neo in the Matrix. You better understand the times that we live in. Can I cook? Because I'm about to cook. And I want everybody to hit this like button. So we can get these notifications out. Can I cook? And we got 4,700 people in the building. Everybody that's watching me, drop a dollar in this super chat so you can sponsor this war. I'm only asking for everybody to drop a dollar. That'll be 4,000. Every time I go live, nigga, I'm at war. I'm at war. It's time to move my family. I can't trust my friends because they praising my enemies. I can't trust my friends because they praising my enemies. Some people called me on the phone and had conversations and apologized. And then others doubled down on KRS-One. They double down on it. So we all understand what it is. And I'm going to get even deeper on this live. I just don't want to get off topic. Oh, I'm going to get deeper. I need for y'all to understand something. We are living in the times of famine and plague. We just went through a lockdown. When the world, the cities was locked down, the world was locked down. Some lived, some died. Some people still partied like it was 1999, but I'm telling you another lockdown is coming. But before that lockdown is coming, you people are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Africa Bambata putting his jism all over little boys. And you are not thinking that every time you turn around, they're telling you that the famine and plague that's going through the neighborhoods is mutating. Because they're turning the level of the stove up. Read them between the line. These plagues are mutating because they're turning the level of the stove up. And some of y'all don't believe that the stove is hot. And when you touch that stove, you're going to make your whole family sick. Because right now, this was the test run. This was the calm before the storm. Shit is about to get real. It's about to get real. And y'all running around in crowds. And now all of a sudden, the, the mayor allowing y'all to get hauled on week and everybody hanging out on the blocks again. How are y'all hanging out? Do you understand when you have been bamboozled? You got a black mayor that's cool with you hanging out like everything is all good in the hood. Do you understand that when they turn the level of that notch up and that sickness spread like a wildfire? You know that shit that came from China that ended up in America? When shit get real in the battlefield, you going to, the, the, the people that you didn't wipe out? Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Rest in peace, our God. I know I can name plenty of people that ain't here because of that. You playing like it's sweet. That boogeyman didn't go anywhere. They tweaking it. It didn't go anywhere. It's being tweaked out. But you hanging out and you partying with your poor ass, celebrating failure. You got a whole bucket of failure when you go home. Your husband failing, you failing, the neighborhood's failing, but y'all celebrating? You're not even celebrating that you bought a brownstone in Harlem. You're not celebrating Harlem Week because you actually bought the community. No, you coming back to visit while the colonizer is actually locking their doors saying, I hope they hurry up and go in so I can go to bed so I can buy some more of your property. Eh, hit them in the head. What, let me, what I got to re, 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 rewind? You know, the, the, the colonizer on your block 
waiting for you to leave Harlem Week so that they could buy the rest of the buildings that you sitting back seeing a for sale sign on and won't buy. But talk about they're taking everything. No, they didn't take it. They bought it. And you let them. But the rims on that BMW, this shit right here, nigga. It's not that I think that I'm better than you. I think that you're pathetic. Because I could go back to being poor tomorrow. I'm broke right now. I could go back to living in the projects, but my dreams will forever be to get out. You know why I got fish tanks and ponds in my yard and fish tanks in my house? Because I dream of getting back to nature. You know, the nature, the wilderness that God gave us that was taken away. The wilderness that we supposed to be living in. So I made the, the surroundings around me look like how I'm supposed to live. No, I don't just talk about it. I be about it. Well, meanwhile, you watch grown ass men with door knocker chains, knock knock, they got knock knockers calling themselves lobby boys. And the shit that pisses me off, I hate attacking people sometimes, our own brothers. But I want to ask y'all a question. Mayno, you specifically, because I don't bite my tongue. Niggas never, never even knew you had sons and daughters. So now when your music career is all the way over, now you start posting pictures up with your sons and daughters after you corrupted our kids? Who motivated you to want to show your kids now? Me, that's who, and you're phony. You dudes corrupted the shit out of our kids. You sold them a one-way trip, trip to the penitentiary. And I'm going to tell y'all something too. Y'all better stop trusting these politicians. When have you ever seen the top cop Hanging out with hip hop artists, aka now the mayor. Used to be the top cop, now he's the mayor. When have you ever? There was a war on the celebrities, the black rappers. Now they intertwine with the government. Run, run. I don't want no smoke with none of them. You can't win. You can't win. We are living in a day and a time where now when you watch Neo in the Matrix, when you see Agent Smith stick his hand and, and turn him into an agent, this is what's happening. You are clearly watching people that's supposed to run from Agent Smith turning into Agent Smith dead directly in front of your face. Are you not entertained? Y'all don't see what I'm seeing? You got the mayor calling a nigga with a scar on his face to discuss what he should do with hip hop. A, a predicate felon. Y'all don't understand what y'all seeing? These dudes are Agent Smiths. This is the Matrix. And some of us is trying to escape the agents. And it don't get no realer than that. Better yet, y'all seen the movie, Time is on my side. Yes, it is. Huh? Did y'all see that one, that, that movie, The Fallen, with Denzel Washington? You better watch that movie. How the gin was jumping from body to body chasing Denzel? Do you understand that energies out there is real like that? You niggas is up in, you know we be up in the club. Like, nigga, when I went up in the club, if you see me up in the club, it's to go celebrate one of my friends. I don't like that energy. I don't like the energy of strangers just being around me and you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to line you up at the end of the night. You in a club with a bunch of miserable people that don't even like each other. The nightlife is evil. The nightlife. Most of the people that you always see up in the club all the time ain't got no life at home. Or they, or they rappers. They got to be there because they trying to, niggas are still 40 and 50 years, 55 years old, still in the club. Still in the club because they trying to sell this nightlife, this rap against the persona. Nigga, it's over. If your friends ain't playing your music on Instagram, how the hell you think the world going to listen to your shit? It's over. You niggas can't even get your friends to play your music on Instagram. But you trying to be a rapper? I'm not saying you not dope. I'm saying the world don't want your friends. Your friends don't want you. The strangers is not listening to you. This is the 50th year anniversary of your music sucking. Wake up. Your message is poison.
poison, poison, po poison. Are you not entertained? Shout out to the 5,000 people in the building. Are you not entertained? It's funny how many people be watching me and studying me, still in my style. I will be forever remembered as the nigga that's gonna go against the grain. Vibe be so off in some of the black clubs, man. We really be in there trying to have a good time listening to 30 straight serial killer songs. Like, we really in there trying to have a good time and vibe out to murder music. What we in there hypnotized, we never all done lost somebody to violence. That's why we all in there on the verge of socking some shit. Cause we keep listening to serial killer music. These young mad ass niggas talk about hitting somebody with a switch. Man, 30 clip, slide, 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 man, we in there drunk, we really hypnotized listening to this devil ass shit, I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't like some of the music, but it be like, man, how's we partying, trying to have a good time listening to murder music, this shit is psychopath shit, for real, like, I mean, the thing, we gotta start switching it up, man, something gotta change, cause that shit is really like, it blow my mind, maybe it's just me, I don't know, I mean, I Niggas is starting to wake up. It ain't that we don't love. I love gangster music. I love any up. Yap that fool. You want big money? Kidnap that fool. I love gangster music, but I can't listen to it every day. I love the music. And let me tell you guys something, man. When you see me playing music, helping my younger brothers chase their dreams, that's what we supposed to do. Help our brothers chase their dreams. I'm not trying to help nobody in the industry, but I am trying to help dudes get successful. Because I believe on your own, you can get to where I got to. You ain't got to be all the way at the top. There's a price that comes with that. You don't got to be all the way at the top. Knocking on Satan's door, begging him to let you in. He know you hungry. He know your community's hungry. He knows you starving. But what he will do is he'll he'll send niggas, he'll send niggas to like Fat Joe, a failed rapper with a $4 million watch that looked like a chandelier on his arm. They'll send him back to the community. Let you go to go get on a boat with him. Go walk around the clubs with him. Walk around the block to show that he still can walk around the block. Yeah. They'll let him parade around using the hood as piss boys. While he creeps back up, back over to his rich lifestyle. How many dudes is living on his level? And I ain't talking about the niggas that's selling drugs around him. Because when a nigga living on a level like that, you shouldn't have to touch a brick ever again in life. You shouldn't have to touch a brick ever again in life. I would die before I buy a $4 million watch. Knowing that half my family's still in the hood. But this is the type of shit that y'all worship. Not even understanding. He another one. Fat Joe. Hanging out with Mayor Adams. Why? What do y'all have in common? What, did, what, is the, what does the Don Cartagena. You know because the mayor the top cop. Spent his whole life locking up drug dealers. Now you hanging out with drug rappers. That got drug dealer friends. Because I know the mayor deals with the FBI, so you know half the niggas around Fat Joe is selling bricks in the hood. And that's not me dry snitching, but we know the FBI knows everything. But now the top mayor hanging out with niggas that's still selling drugs in the hood and taking pictures with them? Y'all niggas don't see what I see? Stay away from me. I be the nigga dry snitching because I want everybody else to know that all y'all niggas is down with each other. Niggas' houses is getting raided. With Lisa Evers outside 5 o'clock in the morning because she got the tip of anybody's house getting raided. And y'all all hanging out together? 
I don't want no parts of it. I can't win. I can't beat these niggas. But you know what? The 5,000 people that's watching me, everybody drop a dollar in my comment section. So y'all can protect me the way that these niggas is protected. Because I can't win. My friends ain't my friends. My friends will backdoor me in a heartbeat. You know why? Because they rap. They like rapper nuts. Niggas love the industry. People got to check with other people to see, yo, is high still cool? I mean, at the end of the day, for the 5,000 people watching me, some of my friends are nut huggers. Some of my friends and family are nut huggers. So when they see when they see y'all showing me love, maybe they'll show me love too because they phony. They want to do it. They want the popular vote. Everybody drop a dollar in my comment section to piss the haters off. And you haters out there, just keep counting. Y'all can go back to the beginning of the video and y'all can count every dollar that was dropped. This is what I deal with. Niggas is getting tired. Niggas is getting tired. This world is falling to pieces. And now at the end of these niggas' career, they know something. America's out of here. Slowly but shortly, listen. Rap about that stuff that actually pays more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. So I make sure I even align and come on, talk on stages like this. But you guys, the NAACP open up doors for people like me to be able to power forward because the things that fund us, that don't power me forward. You know, I just make sure because I know better and I'm at an age point. I'm 36. They power is really went from when we 21 to 25 where we really don't know. Then we get. Did y'all miss that? He go on small stages to balance it out. Little rooms with small audiences, you can't meet, you can't balance that out. You can't go in a room with 200 people in there, but then on the radio, and I love you, Meek. Sometimes I get on you, Meek, I love you, Meek. But you can't get on the radio and sell millions of records where, where you got a billion streams, where you got a billion young boys, you done led to the hellfire, then you go in little rooms where you only waking up 200 people at a time. It doesn't balance out, my nigga. But on my platform, with this 5,000 people, I appreciate your me meat meals. I appreciate what you're saying. Because I'm going to play it again because it needs to be heard. That somebody... That's in power. They call it the algorithm now. Somebody that's in control. They're taking their time and their energy to make sure that they push the most negative frequency of music on our children. To know better is to do better. I just, I don't watch the shy like that. Last night I was in the house board and I watched the shy. While I was watching the shy, I don't know the names of the character. But you had the mother, the mother and the stepfather over here and the, and the, and the father and the stepmother over, over here. And the little kid started cursing. And the father said, ask the child, where did you get that from? And he said, mommy, listen to music in mommy's car. And when, when, the, when, when the two sides collided with the other suits, two sides, they said, yo, you got to stop him from cursing. The other baby mother was like, yo, I'm going to do what I do in my house. And you do what you do in your house. And that's the shit that's going to destroy the hood. That's the shit that's going to destroy the hood. You know why? Now you got to be careful who kids you let your kids play with because other kids will corrupt your kids. Other kids will corrupt your kids. You better be careful who kids you let your kids play with because your kids are being raised right. Or you are trying your best to raise your kids as right as you can because we all dysfunctional in some type of way. To get up every day and listen to a song with somebody killing somebody else, it's dysfunctional. That's why I go back and listen to the old music with Michael Jackson. Because even though I'm still addicted to the poison, I know it ain't right for me. How's ain't eight, eight, not one mil today. But I said, you know what? Just to break the monotony, I'm going to get on this camera and I'm going to talk my shit. I get spicy. And I ain't really even drinking that. I can't, I can't really. It's like I'm battling with myself. I'm battling. My lower self is battling with my higher self. And we all got to get into this battle. 
Every day we got to look at something in ourselves and we have to defeat something about ourselves that we don't like. See, most people, they only want to, all right, you got a pretty female. I, I just want to drop some weight. For what? Your brain is broke. You're not trying to fix that. For what? You're living in poverty. You're not trying to fix that. Your heart. Your heart. There's a vessel. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, says that there is a vessel inside of your body that if, if, if it is corrupted, your whole body is corrupted. But if it is pure, your whole body is pure. And that is the heart. If you see somebody got a foul heart, get away from them. If the heart is foul, then the body is foul. My screen went out. Sorry about that, people. To anybody that drops in in the super chat that I didn't see, I apologize because my screen went out. So nine times out of ten, I'm not going to see it. We are living in the days and times. When I say to you, live life as if you want to run, but stay dangerous at the same time, it's because you are being hunted. Turnpike Mike. She wants her body done. I said, you need a brain transplant. <laughs> yes. Chicks are so backwards that they'll spend $20,000 on some tits and ass, but won't put $20,000 on a house to get their kid out of the hood. You'll spend $20,000 on some tits and ass, but won't spend $20,000 to get your kids out of the hood. I don't understand it. Our women are turning into lab rats. You'll spend $20,000 to get your bins out of the dealership while your kids are still fighting over ice cream, ice cream combs in Bronx River. Clifford Gordon, thank you, family, for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. We live in backwards. And now it's time for us to start separating ourselves. Stay away from crowds. In the last days, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, stay your ass at home. It's safe to say it's not safe outside. Why do these OGs keep telling you to come outside? Why does all the rappers and all the OGs that spent all their time in jail keep baiting you outside? I'm outside. Ain't nothing but evil outside. So what are you inviting me to? You outside where the streets don't love you. Help me to understand this. So you outside where the streets don't love you and your wife inside, but she's supposed to love you. Something, something just ain't right. Well, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Mary, I'll say it again. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. TK, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. Let me tell you something, man. In today's time, everything that we've been taught is a lie. Now it's time to start paying attention to current events and what's going on in front of your face, man. Stay out of crowds. Because in this pandemic, we have become the pandemic within the pandemic. We don't love each other. We ain't happy to see each other happy. Our homes are broken. Niggas get money and go to the club and go to the corner, stand outside in front of the bodegas and the liquor stores 
with their best outfit on to impress other niggas. Niggas go to jail and be beefing for their girls to send them sneakers to get fly to be in jail to impress other niggas. But what I don't see is grown men raising their children. What I don't see is dudes hugged up with their wives, with, with their wives on social media. And I don't post my wife on social media because she don't want to be up here. She don't want to be up here. When she want to show herself, she'll show herself. But until then, when she feel like doing videos or when she feel like posting, she'll be there. But you see me as a father with my kids. What is wrong with these men? That they're still glorifying these streets. Do you know that you have to have a broken brain to be proud of the amount of drugs that you sold in your community? But you think that these same niggas that walk around like they got a purple ribbon they got a purple ribbon from the federal government, from the federal penitentiary after they was released. Now they come home like they's the shiznit. No. These niggas is poison. And when shit hit the fan, they ain't got another 20 years in them. So they're going to sit back and watch what the results is. Because when you got those, when, 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 see, when you got those dudes like Malcolm X and Matula Shakur, Geronimo Pratt, Mumi Abu, when you got a side of Shakur's, when you got people like that, see these real niggas? They'll come back out and try to claim their honor in the streets after the war's over. Them niggas are suckers. Get away from them. You know how I know they suckers? Because they wouldn't even stand next to me when it came to own KRS-One. That's how I know they suckers. But it ain't no more tears. Huh? No more fake daps. No more fake hugs. I know when I look at all you niggas, I got to hold my gun tight. You know the Bible, the fake one, people? Yeah. I know I got to hold it tight. Because in the hearts, in your hearts, it's lost to me. Because the words that I say through this screen right, this screen right here, nigga, that shit be hitting y'all. Because y'all fake. TK, listen to the man. This shit done come out of the blue, it's kind of impossible to come up with these thoughts unless something is triggered. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Heavy Andy, yo, yo, how's Tax Stone wants, wants to own deck the beef with Zip? Listen, man, I ain't got no beef with Zip. I said what I said. I ain't got no, I want to see, I want to see Zip have his best life. There is no beef with me and Zip. I'm not looking for Zip. I want Zip to be prosperous because at the end of the day, Zip just did a long bid. He came home. He did a long bid. He's claiming that he, he believes in God, which means that he's striving to be a righteous man. I don't want to knock that man off his righteous path. I ain't got no smoke with Zip. I have no beef with I Listen, I don't have no beef with nobody. We have a bigger enemy. We have a bigger problem. Do you understand in these cartoons that you watch? Do you understand in these in these cartoons that you watch that they're telling you something? What did Thanos come to do? When you watch the Avengers, what did Thanos come to do? Thanos came to get rid of the world's population. When you listen to Bill Gates go to colleges, he's in colleges. TK, you are not alone. Thank you, family. When Bill Gates go to colleges, he's announcing at these colleges that the population is too big and we have to do what? Reduce the population. Do you understand that we are living in the times of the new world order? Do you understand that we are living in prophecy times of the Digel? Do you understand that we are living in the times that of the coming of Christ? Now, this is where it gets tricky. Oh, my God. This is where it gets tricky. Because certain things the Bible left out, certain things the Quran left out, certain things, but with the th some of the things that was left out of the Bible and the Quran is written on the walls of the pyramids, which is the technology, right? So now you got to use certain things to fill in the blanks. We now know that 
man has the power of God and man has the has has had the power of God from the beginning because there's nothing new up under the sun. So now we are living in the times where we are seeing, like I said, communities in Hawaii burn. We are seeing rains come out of the sky that's flooding. We are seeing unusual weather patterns. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in Hadith said that in the last days, you will not be able to tell the difference between boys and girls and girls and boys. So that means we are living in the signs of the times. You will not be able to tell the difference between boys and girls and girls and boys. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, says that in the last days, and I ain't talking about Elijah Muhammad, punk ass. I ain't talking about Farrakhan or Farrakhun. In the last days, the knowledgeable ones will be taken away. We are living in the day and the time where that the people that we see in front of us only inspire to be rappers. Huh? They only inspire to be rappers. We don't see greatness when we look at black men anymore. We don't even see greatness in our children. We see demons. Now you know we're in trouble. We are living in a time where there's pastors in churches on every block. I, I respectfully ask, where's these pastors while our children are corrupted on demon time as the spells come through the speakers and corrupt our children? Where are these pastors while our, when you watch the exorcist, don't the rabbis and the pastors come out to cast the demons out? Why are they not casting the demons out of our children? Why are they not casting the demons? Why are they not casting the demons out of the speakers that is playing into our children's ears? Why are they not casting the demons out of the TVs that's the TVs tell our visions? Why are they not speaking the gospel? Has the ATM corrupted and, and compromises the, the men of God? And I said it before and I'll say it again in the Bible. Jesus will say, on that day, Jesus will say to you, get ye forth away from me, for you practice lawlessness and wickedness. Well, what is the lawlessness and wickedness that Jesus was talking about? Everything that the Bible has forbidden, these pastors are allowing. Every commandment has been broken on your television. Every commandment has been broken through your speakers. Then you ask yourself a question. Whoa, so the Bible says God cursed a certain people and now a certain people is in charge of everything that's poisoning us? Message. You cannot win without purifying yourself. The Avengers is not coming to save you. Because you are breaking the laws of the universe, because you are breaking the laws of God, because you are breaking the laws of nature. Some of you niggas is dishonoring your mama. Every time you brag about being a thug, your mother didn't raise you to be that way. Now, some of you niggas' mothers didn't raise you, but some of you had good mothers, and you still hang on that's to something that offends her. What's in the favors of your Lord will you deny? Twenty-four hour hours inside. Alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to bless you. I mean, upon Allah. Like random. Satan is pushing for hell on earth and making progress. God is reaching out to the righteous who sees through the spells. But I think Harp be debunked the open up tours of the facility. Y'all don't even understand that the earth is getting ready to give birth to Satan himself. Y'all don't even understand. CCD, keep doing your thing, Haas. F the haters, peace and blessings. Thank you for sponsoring this war family. Appreciate you. 
you versus Charleston and zip in the fight to the death in WWE ring with the outcome highs. What you think? That's not a question that's even worth answering. That's just some ignorant shit. Master Akbaru, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Mr. Check, yo, highs. I'm 52, alcoholic, inspiring rapper. Any advice? <laughs> Give it, give it all you got, baby. Give it all you got. You being an alcoholic doesn't mean anything. Some of the best people in the world. DMX was a crackhead. I don't care who don't like it. And I love DMX. DMX was a crackhead. DMX! Your habits don't make you poor. Well, then again, some of them do. But that don't mean you still ain't loved and you still can't be great. Everybody has faults. Everybody has faults. He ain't got to be DMX. Everybody's special. The janitor is special. The homeless man in front of the pizza shop is special. Everybody is special. I treat everybody the same. If you love me, I love you. If you don't love me, I don't love you. It's simple. But everybody is special in their own way. Saying, no, you always talk, but you preach that. Let me tell you something, man. I take care of everybody around me. I'm the, when, when, when niggas say they're the realest nigga, I'm the realest nigga that I know. When my friends got beef, I never asked no questions, especially back in the days. I could have been in jail right now for the rest of my life for, for my friends. Some of these same friends that see me breaking down live in the street. And won't even come to meet me and see how I'm doing. They won't even come. Oh, he's a bug out. Nah, I ain't a bug out. Not no more. I don't have to bug out. Monty, thank you for sports for this wall family. Right now, it's time to put differences to the side. Follow the people that's going to be, that's going, like, you know what, let me tell you something. I should have named this shit the last call for alcohol. Bring a thousand to bring two thousand. Speak on it. Text two. I'm 72 living in the eighth childhood. Any advice? You 72 living in the eighth childhood? There ain't no helping you, my nigga. <laughs> if you're 72 years old and you're living in your eighth childhood, I can't help you. Nobody can help you. Mm. Sleeping Ghost, thank you for sponsoring this wall. Appreciate you. I'm sick and tired of our children being misled. We are living in evil times. We are living in times where you have to draw the line and you have to understand that certain things don't happen. You don't see a, 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 a giraffe hanging out with a lion. It goes against the laws of nature. When you see a Fat Joe and a Mano and all the rest of these rappers hanging out with the mayor, that means that the streets are being infiltrated. Niggas are being held around. For, let me tell you something. When Puerto Rico went through that hurricane and I seen Fat Joe get on a plane and land in Puerto Rico and bring supplies over there, every time a natural disaster happens, the governments don't let regular people go in. They seal it off. They contain it. FEMA's the first one to drop. When they let Fat Joe get on that plane, I knew he was a government. And now Oprah? There was a time when Oprah Winfrey wouldn't even let black people on her show. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember when Oprah Winfrey wouldn't let black... Now Oprah Winfrey? She's hanging around Fat Joe. Gail King is around Fat Joe? Do y'all not see the agenda? You have been infiltrated as a people. You've been infiltrated. Why do you think the closer we get to these calamities, 
the more and more and more they start trying to make my, my channel start dying down. Now, when they start pushing my channel again, you better watch out because that's when they're going to send the assassins. Now, that's where I got to watch out at. That's where you got to watch out for that blood sacrifice where they try to use Hassan Campbell as a fatal distraction where my name is all over the internet now and now main street media wants to talk about Hassan Campbell when they didn't mention him any before. I've been going viral for years. These big stages wouldn't even mention my name because they can't. So when you see somebody that's being pushed on Rock Nation, on the radio stations, you better question, why are they there? Only a selective few could get up there. And every once in a while, they might get a, a, a low, low level rapper and put them on Freestyle Friday just to entertain the people to kick that nigga right back to the street corners. Right back to the street corners because the reality of it is, tell them, what, what, what did Meek Mill say? The same thing I told y'all before. If they don't want you older than 25. About that stuff, they actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. So I make sure I even align and come with talk on stages like this. But you guys, the NAACP open up doors for people like me to be able to power forward because the things that fund us that don't power me forward. You know, I just make sure because I know better and I'm at an age point, I'm 36. They power is really went from when we 21 to 25, where we really don't know that we get. Save the music. Matter of fact, it's too late. Turn the radio off. Turn the radio. But if you all going to listen to music, Mackie, thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Make sure you support those rap artists, your mans. You know, like my nigga Swelly. Like Lord I Kim. Like how I, I Iron Sheet. Like all the dudes, Five Guard, all like you, like. Y'all have never seen me on my platform not trying to big up my brother standing next to me. You've never seen me not try to big up my brothers. Uh, Fool 36 and bunny hopping Yes he is but you know what Sometimes you gotta take the message and leave the messenger I hate the world it is now Sometimes I feel the same way K the baby Thank you family appreciate you Much love highs appreciate you Nine inch deep throat <laughs> Appreciate you Nine inch deep throat Like damn you niggas is crazy <laughs> But I needed a laugh. I needed a laugh. Nah, how he moonwalk through that door? <laughs> oh, man. Bring Coru out. You know what? Me and Coru were supposed to do something today, but um, I got sidetracked and stuff like that. Lewis P86, shout out to you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this wall. Like I said, man, we got 5,500 people in the building. If everybody give me a dollar, then I got some money to put away from my enemies. It's time to move out of this house anyway. Too many niggas know where my family is at. Live life as if you want to run and stay dangerous at the same time. Y'all see my enemies getting strong. K the baby. Platform on fleek. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Shout out to the 5,600 people in the building. Yeah, hit that like button. Drop a dollar in that super chat. Piss the haters off. I need y'all to piss them off. All the way off. I need you to make all the people who abandoned me for KRS-One, Fat Joe, and Africa Bambada, I need, you, I need them to feel like 
I'm not alone. I'm serious about this shit. Y'all never, ever, ever see me telling y'all to drop something. Now I want y'all because they weak. Since money is they God, let them see the dollars. They weak. It's 5,600 people in the building. Drop $1 in the super chat. For every one person in this building, if you ain't got one dollar, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Deep ends, thank you for sponsoring this war. No, they sick. Like, damn, we thought it was over. Nah, it's just that now what they doing is they want me to do more lives on my big page. Mike Obi, thank you for sponsoring this war. They want me to do more lives on, on my big page so they can stop my own my pre-recorders. K the baby, thank you, family. Appreciate you. You vibrate on a level which vibrates with you. Either you attract or repel. There is something for everyone. Never throw away the music, but accept what what is you. Need a S need a stroke strike now, nah, but stay safe seriously. Killing them with a cell phone setup. Killing, yo, that's the crazy part about it. That's the crazy part about it. I'm killing, I'm literally sitting here with my cell phone, not my laptop. And every time I want to play something from y'all, I don't sit up there and get sophisticated with the laptop. I sit up there and grab another cell phone and put it in front of the camera and play it. And that's why niggas hate me. Because they can't figure out how to beat me. You want to beat me? Be yourself. Be yourself. There's somebody out there for everybody. There's over 7 to 9 billion people in the world. If you can be yourself in front of the camera, I guarantee you it's at least a million people that's just like you. There's a million. None of us is unique. Even Neil in, Neil in the, the Matrix, he had who? Morpheus. He had a team. He had Trinity. Jameer Sanders, thank you, family. Driller, 1804. Zip post, everyone is fake. It's F. F everybody. I feel you on that. Mike Obi, thank you. Ebony Jackson. Heavy Andy. Are you going to show your coats and, and, and play five guard and swelly? <laughs> Showing love from Toronto. Thank you, family. Mm -hmm. Beyond me, girl. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. D-Nasty, you're doing something right when they hate God. Take over bullies. Shout out to you, family. Behind the Bar is corny. Now, actually, Behind the Bar has potential to be a dope YouTuber. He just got to get out of his own way. Behind the Bar has potential. Underground, we... Keep speaking facts, Haas. St. Lou, Fat Joe with Oprah and Gail King, something, something just ain't right. Why is Fat Joe around with Gail King and Oprah? Y'all niggas is not looking to asking yourself something. It's not, yo, you do not see a lion hanging out with a giraffe. It's never going to happen. No wildfires in Canada. They dropped it from the sky. Of course they did. Now somebody getting pissed off. They getting pissed off. Like, hold up, we got to this live late. Let's start pulling people out of this live. Deep ends. Four quarters. Y'all come on, house. Some of us F what? Ronoki Rie. I hope I pronounced that right. Turnpike Mike. Y'all tell them when they EMP drop, we going to see who the illest in Nebraska. Yo, they telling you that they going to drop that EMP. They telling you. We sitting up there watching them tell you that it's coming. They're telling you the EMP is coming, but that's cool because now it's just like when COVID hit, right? Now you was forced to stay at home and face that dude that you married or you laying up with. Now you you forced to face that woman and them children. And you know what? A lot of people couldn't take it. So when you couldn't be in the streets no more, domestic violence went sky high. You better figure out what kind of problems you have it in your house and you better fix them because you are living in the days and the time when it's time to get out the streets, man. Evil is being unleashed in the streets. 
And it's time for you to get right within yourself. If you call yourself God, then you ain't right with yourself. Everybody looking to escape reality. You really, really happy with life? Every night you got to take a drink? You ain't the one that had to wake up uh, or, or have nightmares about Africa being bottled. Why are you drinking? Why are you smoking all these blunts? Why are you popping all these pills? You taking pain pills and you ain't in pain? Of course you in pain. Share it with me. Matter of fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have a night where I'm going to invite the audience up. And I want to hear your story. I want to know what hurts you. Because people are hiding their pains when we should be sharing our stories. Because that's the only way you're going to heal. You got to talk to people that care about you. And in this channel right here, some of us care about each other. Cole MB, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Cottonmouth, hit him in the head with the... I want y'all to understand something. That there's a real, real serious thing. Like when, when you hear energy vampires, when you hear that term, pay attention to your circle. Sometimes you could be an energy vampire. Sometimes I could be an energy vampire. Sometimes I'll pick up the phone. And on the other end of that phone is a nasty attitude. And automatically you got to like that, that the wrong things being said to you or you said to somebody else, you could mess up somebody's whole day. When I sit back and I watch Denzel, they uh 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 uh, uh of the what's the name of that again? Um, the Fallen. Time is. Oh, I understand that gins exist. The gins exist, and sometimes the gins come in the forms of your friends. You ever had a fight with your man, and you told your man about your business, of your friends about your business. And now every time you turn around, your friends are reminding them about the gossip you told them about your man. And you on good terms with your man. But now she just said something to you to trigger some old shit that he did. And now you looking at him sideways again when y'all was on good terms. You better understand the gin, the whisper. You better understand that whisper. It's evil. And some people ain't satisfied until they mess up your life. You better understand something, right? In Islam, it teaches you that the shaitan, the highest reward that he gives, his soldiers, his jinn, is when they come back to him and tell him, I didn't leave such and such and such and such until they announced divorce. Some people can't wait to see your home broken. It's time to close your door. Your door, it's time to cut your phone off. Get into yourself. Elevate. Elevate. When I watched that movie, The Last Dragon, that was one of my favorite movies ever. One of my favorite classic movies ever that's going to go down. Ever. The whole time, Bruce Leroy was a punk looking for the master. He was in, yo, he mastered karate, but didn't want to fight. But when it came time to fight, when he had no choice, he fought. This is where we need to be. Looking for that glow within ourselves to heal ourselves. Some of us are sleeping with the enemy. I'm going to say this again that I want you all to understand. That video, this video with gunplay, man, it hit home because I've been in situations where I was the abuser, the aggressor, who put my hand on a, fe a female. And I've been in situations where females are trying to set you up. That girl baited that man. Get right or get left. Everybody need to look at their spouse, look at their children, and see where you are going in, th in this world today. What do your family mean to you? Are y'all going in the same direction? Because you are not going to survive what's coming tomorrow. If you don't get right today, if nothing happens overnight.
But one thing Allah says in the Quran, he says, say, say of nothing that you're going to do tomorrow. It starts today. Even what you're talking to yourself. The first student of you should be yourself. Because grievous is it in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not. Grievous is it in the sight of God that you say and you tell people to do what you're not going to do yourself. And sometimes I found myself in those shoes. Tomorrow's not promise. But some of us are going to wake up without a plan. Get right or get left. Mentally, if you don't get your shit together, you're not going to be able to stand. You're not, you're, you're not going to be able to handle what you're going to see. Your government is telling you that UFOs exist and there's footage all over the place now. Are you prepared? If you've seen a real UFO invasion, I'm going to be real now. If you walked outside your house and you looked up in the sky and seen them hovering over your head, whether this Project Blue Bean or the real UFOs off, off, off it's the ancestors coming back, right? Or not, not even so much our ancestors, but our people, because we're not from this earth. We're not from here. Some of us are not from here. All of us are not from this earth. So when those motherships come, will you have a heart attack? Because your psyche and your nerves can handle actually seeing these beams of lights and these ships hovering over your head. The sight of that is enough to make you have a heart attack. Do you understand that? If the earth shakes, whether it be by machine or be the bombs exploding in the oceans, them heating the ocean up, whichever way, if those tsunamis hit this land, will you be able to think quick and say, hey, this is what I need to do? Before our cities get swept away? Or will you get caught up in the tides? Because you stuck on stupid. And the only thing you can sit up there and think about is little baby and little Dirk. And what style has Drake braided his hair in today? I swear to God Drake ain't start braiding his hair and growing his hair until he see me grow my hair. Yep, and I feel like that. You couldn't pay me to believe that Drake ain't watching me. He watching the battle rappers. Some of y'all going to be finally able to see your favorite rappers in concert on Judgment Day. It'll be a fire concert. Yo, that is crazy right there. That's, that's some hell of a bars. You are definitely going to see your favorite rapper and their performance being wrapped up in a scroll. I don't care who don't believe in the hellfire. I do. I definitely do. Some people living on hell on earth. You ain't even got to die to go to hell. You in hell right now. You know what kind of what, what kind of sick sick brain you got to have to be 50 years old and you competing with a 20-year-old in a rap game? Yo, in Syracuse, New York, on the 18th, there was an earthquake. Nobody felt it for 10 minutes, bro. In the, in the shoes, these rappers advertise has everything fooled. The earth is speaking. Whether it's man-made or it's mother nature, the earth is speaking. But those in power are not preparing you for doomsday. They kept you living in the areas that was going to collapse. And they do this and they've been doing this for centuries. I tell you, the more and more I study these pyramids, the more and more I study technology, the more and more I see how far technology goes back, the more and more I know everything that they taught us is a lie. Black history is a lie. Mansa Musa is a lie. Everything that they told you, Harriet Tubman is a lie. They lied to you. They want you to be some dumbass country bunkins. They lied. Everything they ever taught you was a lie. They're not gonna take, they're not gonna take you back to where you actually drove the ufos 
They're not going to take you back to you being the first ones or your ancestors being the first ones to drive the flying cars like me, George Jetson. No, they're not going to teach you that. What they're going to do is they're going to let Mother Nature wipe you out. They tell you another stupid story of slavery. I don't even believe in slavery no more. Everything is a goddamn lie. That's why when Neo in the Matrix said, you're going to take this red pill or this blue pill, you know, the shit that they did to us. And every time they feel like resetting this earth, they push a button and technology wipes your ass out. And they've been here from the beginning of time. You know, it's a deep movie to watch. John Carter. That movie with the little stupid things that look like they from um, Star Wars. The first time I seen that movie, I said, I'm not watching this dumbass movie. But then when I watched and it broke down the gym, how the gym was in power behind the people in power whispering. And how he was really from Monsoon. I better wake up. Because some of these cartoons is telling you something. Lisa, thanks, Haas, for the knowledge and passion from New Rochelle, from, from New York, New Rochelle. Thank you, family. Appreciate you, sis. Irv Gotti looking like Mark Cuban on Drink Champs. Thought I was watching Shark Tank for a minute. I got to look at that um, Irv Gotti. I like Irv Gotti. Irv Gotti spanked. For stepping on master's shoes. At one point in time, Earth went through the door. By 2030, 50% of the women between the ages of 25 and 45 will be single and childless. Takes a village to raise a child. Fruits with no seeds, no children. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, most of us men, you sit there and wonder why your sperm count is dropping. Because you got this cell phone in your pocket. And some of us got two or three cell phones in our pocket, not realizing that the frequencies that's coming from this cell phone is expect is, is yo, it's destroying your sperm count. And you wondering why you're going through all types of things in your body. You think you got plenty of seeds until you put it up under that microwave. I mean that on that microscope, and you actually look and see that your seeds ain't swimming. Then you see that your seeds ain't swimming. Then what? woman to choose another woman can you blame them can you really really choose can you really really blame a woman for going gay looking at the caliber of niggas that they gotta pick from I feel sorry for our women black women of today have to dig in a garbage can to find a man black women of today Got a dig in a garbage can. She don't know if she dating her child or man. Niggas is standing outside on the street corners. Spent giving they dedicating their whole life to street corners. You outside on one side of the corner and your kids outside on the other side of the corner competing for the block. Why the hell should a black woman want a black man when she can't find one? Black men don't want to be men. They want to live their second childhood, but still want to rep being a gangster. And then other black men, like me, myself, now I'm just trying to survive you niggas. See, the whole key to it is, is not for me to prove that you tough. The whole key to it is, is for me not to end up in the penitentiary, knowing that my wife got responsibility and got to take care of children, especially aut autistic children. You got an autistic child you got to take care of? Now, you don't went to jail, threw your life away because you let a nigga bait and trick you out of your goddamn freedom. 
Niggas that don't want nothing out of life but an outfit. Your whole life consists of what outfit you wearing tomorrow. And wonder why your bum asses is still standing on the same blocks. Your whole life consists of what outfits you putting on tomorrow. Your whole life was dedicated to you getting a dollar to go get a goddamn outfit. And you ain't impressing the bitches with the outfit no more. You out there impressing the niggas. So now you think that the woman is supposed to be sitting up there competing to go get you. They said, you know what? They might as well sleep with each other. Because the crazy part about it is damn near 75, 80% of the women never had an orgasm anyway. So now a woman knows how to please a woman. Y'all can't please her. You can't provide for her. You ain't going to defend her. Your man call you on the phone. You shoot the block up for him. Something happened with your kid. Your kid get touched by Africa Bad Bada, about by, 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 by the uncle in the family. You're not even around to protect them. You too busy in jail bragging about what you was doing in the streets. Then you come home at 40 and 50 years old and you niggas is washed up. Washed up. Talk about I can't do that internet shit. Well, I can't do that street corner shit. You niggas look stupid. See me, I'm sitting right in my house. My kids going in the refrigerator, getting whatever they need. Dogs running around. When I get tired, I go to bed next to my wife. You niggas, you on the block. Police pulling up. Sizing you up, little niggas on the block talk about I dare this old nigga to get out of line. Last time I was standing on Cortland Ave, and I seen them little niggas just wilding and had a diffuser situation with one of my boys and one of them young boys, and I seen the level of disrespect. That them young boys have. I can't be on the block like that. Because I got to run the block. The little niggas can't run the block. I've never let. The, like when I was on the block. I never, never, never. I had to run the block. I got to be that nigga. Or I can't be on the block. And I'm too old to be that nigga. Because you can't run the block. And run your house. If you keep playing in these streets. You're going to even. You're going you gonna to lose your family. To go into jail or you're going to lose your life. The streets is undefeated, my nigga. And I'm going to say this again. I hate when you bozo ass niggas be sit up there like, I'm outside. I'm outside. So you outside. Right? So that makes you realer than the niggas that got killed in the street. I know some of the illest niggas that was murdered in these streets. But you still alive. And you bragging about being outside, but you not an ill nigga like him. You not an ill nigga like them. You niggas can't compete to be like y'all niggas wasn't like B.O. Y'all wasn't like Killer Ben in Brooklyn. Y'all wasn't like the real 50 Cent out there in Brooklyn. But y'all bragging about being outside. Y'all niggas is living on a season of mercy. God having mercy for you coward ass niggas. I bet you one thing though, you won't catch me outside and broke at the same time. Cause you get, I guarantee you, if I'm standing outside all day and all night, I better be coming in the house with the bag. Nigga, you went outside broke and came back in the house broke. You went outside all day broke and you came back in the house broke and you wonder why shorty flipping. That's why. So you was outside all day and everybody else was getting money and you came and I was broke. That's why niggas hate me. Because I'm going to be the nigga that say over and over again. If you have the finances, not if you don't have them. If you have the finances to get your kids out of the hood. And you don't? That's child abuse. And you are negligent. Mayor Adams met with Maino, Fabio, B Love, and the whole New York drill scene got indicted. They charged they 
they they they they, they charged the frequency. They changed the frequency of music to 43 hertz to 440, 4, uh, 432 to 440. Zip post. The internet will become obsolete in the future people will come obsolete in the future people are becoming obsolete right now you sitting back and you watching rise of the machines artificial intelligence will be answering phone calls and, and working your jobs there's gas stations right now that has nobody in it supermarkets that's going that 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 has nobody in they they filling the shelves up Eventually, with machines, the jobs are being eliminated. Animals are being eliminated. Nigga, you're going to be eating bugs. Y'all not even understanding. They getting ready to, te to teach you because they want mankind to survive enough to still have slaves. So they got to keep on, keep on uh, enough to have to still have slaves on this earth. So the ones that still live and they're teaching you to eat crickets. No stores, no jobs. AI is here. Yeah. Yeah. A robot can't fix the HVAC or plumbing. Yes, it can. But then again, I think y'all y'all fail to realize that um we moving towards the era of smart cities. They think it's a flex having a car that that that's all computer. They have no idea what's about to happen. Man, let me tell you something, man. As I get older. All I want is the simple things in life. Give me a good TV show. Even though I don't watch TV too much, give me a good TV show where I can entertain myself a little bit. I like to entertain myself. Give me a good restaurant. Every once in a while, I like to go out to eat. Let me play with my dog. Let me play with my fish. Let me water my plants. It's simple. People, I don't want to be around everybody. I don't want everybody's energy. Haas is going to be a military um, world. It's already a military world. I grew up in a military world. When I was going to school, we had to go through metal detectors. See, some of y'all schools in the South, I don't know how y'all go to school. But in, I, in my schools in, in New York, we had to go through metal detectors. When my mother used to send me to the store, Half the time I was going through the store, I used to have to run, run from detectives because they were searching me before I even had a gun. And then when they catch me, they whoop your ass because you ran. You ran it, but you run it because they chasing you. Then when they catch you, they beat you up because you made them run. Then you like, why are you hitting me? Because you made me run. Why are you chasing me? Because you ran. Why are you searching me? Because you look like a suspect. I was born in this world a criminal. Even before I committed a crime. Can you feel me? It's sad. I sat back and I watched... How the internet did. First of all, I don't really like getting in people's business and relationships. Gunplay. But what I will say is this, right? I'm going to stop feeling sorry for some of you bitches out there. You got involved with a nigga. Shout out to Gunplay. With a nigga named Gunplay. And now y'all want to make him the bad guy? When she met the nigga, the nigga name was Gunplay. She knew, she knew, his name described everything that he was about. I'm sick and tired of women playing victim to circumstances that they put themselves into. So she, the innocent little girl, decided, your mama didn't teach you not to date a nigga named Gunplay?
All I've ever heard about, and shout out to Gunplay, Gunplay, because I'm really defending him. So I got to make this clear, because I rocks with Gunplay. Shorty, all she ever heard about, all I ever heard about him was negative shit. He was all over the internet. So you knew who he was when you got with him. Now you all over social media crying? You crying. He's the bad guy. He's who you signed up for. But the sad part about it is I ain't with the shenanigans. Nah, man. She lied this nigga. And I'm sorry. I can't see it no other way. Matter of fact, there you go. I'm going to read this shit again. My eyes is blurry now, so I might sound retarded. Right? I'm going to read this again. Because I read this before I seen the video. I didn't see the video. I just want everybody to know my daughter and I are safe. My daughter, safety is my first priority. All right, I can't see with the glasses. Unfortunately, Richard is back using... Developed a very bad drinking problem. I tried everything in my power to help him and love him. This is a demon he has to overcome on his own. At this point, I really believe it's too late. To summarize last night's event, I asked Richard to quiet down as he scared the baby sleeping by yelling, playing Call of Duty. He started going off on me for asking him to be quiet. I tried to collect the bag so my daughter and I can go to a room while he sobers up. He didn't want us to leave and things went left. He was arrested last night. The weapon in the police custody. I have a restraining order. My daughter is in the custody of and I am filing for divorce. He will never get a chance to disrespect or use us again. Thank you all for the well wishes and prayers. This is a very traumatizing experience. Please keep me in prayer. Now you hear this cry? Yo, another fly? I'm going to kill you, nigga. I'm telling you. I'm going to do you like the last fly. Y'all heard that, right? He spazzed out because I asked him to turn down the game. Watch this video. So, <laughs> that's gonna cut up here in a minute. Um, uh, I'm going to the service over. Uh, all right, y'all. So, uh, let me get off because she said my phone is gonna cut off. <laughs> live playing Call of Duty. He's live. Now follow me this, because I'm going to be reading the comment section on this one. He's live playing Call of Duty. She's standing behind him. She's standing behind him with an attitude. Nasty. He got a smile smirk because he's live. She's playing him. They're going to tell him why he's live. That's like my wife coming in here telling me while I'm live speaking to y'all. Your phone getting ready to cut off. I just cut it off. You just pushed every button. Again, watch. 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 So... Look at her face. <laughs> he laughing. That's going to cut up here in a minute. That's going to cut off in a minute. Um, uh, I'm going to the service though. All right, y'all. So uh, let me get off because she said my phone is going to cut off. <laughs> Now, the lies people tell 
The lies. Let me read this bullshit again. Pardon me, my screen went out. Y'all saw what y'all just saw, right? Now listen to what she's saying again. Let me take these glasses off. I just want everybody to know my daughter and I are safe. My daughter's safety is my first priority. Unfortunately, Richard is back using drugs again, developed a very bad drinking problem. I've tried everything in my power to help him and love him. This is a demon he has, over, he has to overcome on his own. At this point, I really believe it's too late. To summarize this last event, I asked Richard to quiet down as he scared the baby sleeping by yelling playing Call of Duty. He started going off on me for asking him to be quiet. I tried to collect a, a bag so my daughter and I can go to a room while he was sobering up. He didn't want us to leave and things went left. He was arrested last night. The weapon is in the police custody. I have a restraining order. My daughter is in custody and I am filing for a divorce. He will never get a chance to disrespect us again. Thank you all for the well wishes and prayer. This is a very traumatizing experience. Please keep me in prayer. Did that cockeyed little bitch look like she was traumatized? I'm reading the super chat. I'm in the comment section. Took 5,500 people in the building. Now they're pulling it down again. Did that cockeyed bitch look like she was traumatized? I didn't see that. I saw a woman that stood behind him with an ice grill. Started talking shit to him. Then she told him, that's why your phone getting ready to cut off. So he's still cool and calm while he's live, laughing, shrugged his shoulders. That didn't work. So she told you, okay, now I'm going to go pack a bag. And I'm taking your child. My child, you ain't going nowhere with my child. That's what an angry man, now you're making me angry. Because now you're telling me, our child that, that was in the hospital that had to have surgeries, now you're going to pull a child in the middle of this and now you packing bags talking about you going to a hotel. Is that what you really told him? That you was just going to go sleep at a hotel till he calmed down because he's a cold cat? That chick baited him out of his freedom. Now he in jail with no bail. She baited him. She baited him. Most of the time when a man is angry, the woman walks, the, the, the respectable woman, you know what, I ain't going to even get into it with this nigga. I'm going to go in the next room, let him stay in that room till he calm off, he calm down. She's standing behind him. The only rapper that I know that's on his level, what connects to Meek Mills, Rick Ross, and all the big niggas, sitting in the house playing PlayStation in the house with his woman. And her attitude is because he was a little loud? That's what led to you standing behind him with an attitude like that? When she could have just got in the car, took the baby for a ride, came back, he done calmed down. Nah, she started that fight. And you can see it all in her body language. And see me, I'm not controlled by mainstream media. The old me would have did what Mike Tyson said back in the days. The best punch he ever threw is when he hit Robbins Givens and she hit every wall. I could see the frustration. You're going to tell everybody now. You cut my phone off like I'm a little kid. He's live. She's standing behind him telling him. Oh, don't worry. Your phone getting ready to go off. Honestly speaking, I think I would have smacked her. Even today's time, I think I would have smacked her for that one. I think I would have smacked her. I would have wanted to smack the shit out of her for that. You want to humiliate me? A man has to be a man. She humiliated him, then sick the police on him. The gun is in the police custody. Why? Because you told the police he had a gun in the house? So when you called the police, they wouldn't retrieve him? He ain't point shit at her. Why you got to point a gun at her? I know black men. 
I know black men, and I know gun. Uh, I, I I know I know gunplay is the type of dude that will smack a female, but he didn't. He didn't. He played cool. So because she didn't have no bruises, he pointed a gun at me. Why would he point a gun? If I'm mad enough to point a gun at you, I'm gonna beat you up. Exactly. At least we, he was home. Like, come on, man. Now he in jail. And when he come home, she got an order of protection because his name is Gunplay and Gunplay ain't going to have a nigga just running around with his shorty and his kid. So now that she got the order of protection and she took his freedom, the family ain't even worth fighting for no more. And she's still a little pretty little hoe, so you know somebody else going to be smashing her. And it's like, what's the first thing we do? Oh, he got a coke cabin. Oh, he this. Oh, he that. Whatever he was. If Gunplay was a coke hat, he damn sure his name is Gunplay. And all the information that any female ever wanted about Gunplay is on the internet. That's why any female that get with me right now, in 2023, 2024, nigga, I'm all over the internet. You can't act like anything's a secret. Oh, he's a dumb out. His name is Gunplay. You got with him because you like the gunplay. Now you don't like it no more? Oh, man. Pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. Some of us are sleeping with the enemy. Some of you niggas don't even realize you think you a player playing on shorty and she lying to you. She know about all those dirty little secrets that you got, all them little Jezebels you've been boning, and she's going to get you back. You think that is sweet. Some of you niggas that's watching me right now don't even realize that y'all females is lining you up. Lining you. Like this stupid nigga think he got away. Nigga, I don't trust nothing. I done did all types of wrong shit in my, in my days of being foul. I done did all I don't trust nothing. Nobody. Everything comes back. You reap what you sow. If you don't pay for what you did on this earth, you're going to pay for it in the grave. I'm telling you. That's why you better raise your light. You better elevate your light, man. Now, let me say something to y'all. On some real shit. On some real shit, man. When that situation first happened, when Young Thug, my first thought was this is a celebrity sacrifice slash distraction. They're going to use this trial to be a big trial slash distraction. I never really felt like Young Thug was going to spend the rest of his life in jail. I never thought that he was going to stay in jail. I never thought that he was going to be convicted. Do y'all understand the times that we living in? You have Donald Trump. Sometimes this shit is just unbelievable it feels like a script. Like we being played like fools. You got Donald Trump being accused by the district attorney or rather being persuaded, pursued by the district attorney for, for hiding paperwork, right? And other stupid shit. Just stupid, stupid shit. Now he got a bail out from jail. But Donald Trump is accusing this same black district attorney, right? Where's she at? Images of the black district attorney from Atlanta, the female. Where's she at? This district attorney is accused by the president, Donald Trump, of having sexual relationships with the same gang members that's locked up. So this district attorney that got Young Thug locked up was engaged with one of the homies and having sexual relationship with a high gang 
ranking member, this same chick is indicting and having the president, Donald Trump, to some of us, the greatest president that ever worked America, the greatest president that I've seen, this shit don't feel like a script to you? Is this really real? Is this what really going on? So Donald Trump now is supposed to go to jail. Will he end up like Epstein? Will he end up like Epstein in that jail cell? Is this where the Simpsons come into play? Where something happens to Donald Trump and he passes away and now white America is at war because a black district attorney had a white president locked up, the greatest president that America ever had? The one that made the hood rich with PPP loans? This shit don't seem like a scripted movie? What is the angle? You got district attorneys dating gangbangers? And the government knows about it and she's still a district attorney reigning in the courtroom still presiding over cases with Young Thug, one of the biggest rappers ever? Something about this whole shit don't smell right to me. I'm sorry. Just like with King Vaughn. I know y'all don't understand. We don't all see through the same eyes. But it's just something, something not sitting right with me. About that King Vaughn murder. I'm sorry. It seemed like it was staged. The boy was baited. He ended up with seven bullets in his torso. Everybody's blaming little Tim. But we ain't got no, no proof that little Tim shot him. We don't have no proof. All of the bullets, you gonna tell me. When have you ever seen the police? When? When? Just use your logical thinking. When have you ever seen the police? See one black man shooting another black man and don't empty all the bullets out on the, on the man with the gun. When have you ever seen a police shoot low Tim and leave him alive? With all those police that was out there. So you mean to tell me the police sat there and watched Little Tim shoot King Vaughn seven times? That's seven bullets. That's mass center in him. And they only shot Little Tim once? Whose bullets was really inside King Vaughn? I don't trust it. I'm sorry. How's you always put the pieces to the puzzle together? Because you got to think outside the box, man. Most of the time you see a nigga dead in the hood, it's his mans that lined him. His mans that co-signed it. Yo, y'all, let me tell you something. For those of y'all that watched that murder that happened with Dawn from Bronx River. Let me bring up Dawn from Bronx River, right? Rest in peace to Dawn. In the video... You see Don on his scooter, riding the scooter to Morrison and Soundview. He pulls up on Morrison, gives a dude a dap. Soon as he pulls up, dude runs from around a van. He was waiting for him in the street. Start airing him out. Blocker, 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 airing him. They knew he was on his way down there. Somebody gave them niggas the heads up. He got lined. And I guarantee you it was one of them dusty ass niggas from Bronx River. Lined the old man up. Lined him. Lined him. When you look at the footage of Tupac inside that car with Suge Knight Tupac had a look in his face like something, something just ain't right. Hold up. Come on, man. I ain't got to talk about it. I learned how to read being in these streets. 
Images of Tupac with Suge Knight in the car the night that he died. Look how Suge is looking away. Tupac got the stupid face. He's not looking like we looking at paparazzi, what's up? Suge Knight knows something is getting ready to happen. Pac knows something is getting ready to happen. You don't see it? The world is a stage, man. Lights, cameras, action. Just know that you the leading role in your life. You better play your shit to the T. Pac had the stupid face. Let me see something. Video vixen Aaron Hall wife tells her story about being set up. Video vixen Aaron Hall wife tells a story about being set up. And 17 and pregnant. Yeah. So maybe he was contemplating with himself. I don't know if he. Goodbye. Yes, yes, but today I really want to focus on sacrificing people who sacrifice people for mm -hmm. gain, for mm -hmm. money, for power, for celebrity status. And mm -hmm. I believe that this is a... This is Aaron Hall's baby mother, video vixen, Glo Glo Gloria Valles. She was a very, very popular video vixen. Don't listen to me. Listen to her. My screen went out. Uh. Subject for a lot of people because people don't want to acknowledge that this does happen. Right. That people sacrifice people for money and fame. Mm -hmm. And um, people are scared to. You know, I think it's time for people to talk about things that, you know, you don't want to talk about, but that's really happening. We have to face it today. Sure. And the reason why I'm bringing up this topic today is because it was told to my son, my oldest, that just turned 25. Happy birthday, Aaron. Um, yesterday and um, that he wasn't supposed to be born so I know that sounds crazy really? um, he was yeah he was over a mutual friend of me and his father uh, Blue Da Vinci's house uh, he's recording with his son doing music yes my shout out to Blue Da Vinci I like Blue Da Vinci no matter what they what, what people be saying about him I like Blue Da Vinci he's musically talented as well and um, a gentleman was visiting him, and when Blue introduced my son as Aaron Hall, Gloria Velez's child, um, the gentleman told my son he wasn't supposed to be born. So this was shock for my son. My son was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? That's not something you say to someone you just met, you know? Right. Um, right. So he said, call your father, FaceTime your father. I'll confirm the whole story. And my son got on FaceTime with his dad and this gentleman. And they told my son this story, which I never told him ever in his life. Mm. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it, okay? okay? Let's get into this. I want y'all to listen to this shit real careful. Because she's about to teach you how the world is a stage. Mm -hmm. It was the year 1996. Mm -hmm. um, I am dating Aaron Hall. I am 17 years old and pregnant at the time, I know. Um, we're actually in LA and he was going to sign with Death Row Records, okay? So he's recording, doing music, you know, he's doing video shoots and I was, you know, part of it. We were living out in a hotel, you know, because we wasn't, you know, living, living there. We was just recording and he was just getting a feel of the whole, everybody's going to sign with Death Row. You know, you got Pac, you got Casey and Jojo, you got Snoop. Mm -hmm. It was, it was amazing right. um, to be a part, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Aaron's super talented and they wanted to be a part of Death Row Records. We mm -hmm. were invited to a Mother's Day event, uh, 1996, and all of Death Row family and friends were supposed to join, come and watch, you know, their relatives perform for them. So I thought that was a beautiful thing. I was going to get my hair and nails done. Mm -hmm. And Aaron was like, I can't take you. I can't take you. Uh, Tupac is going... Listen real careful. 
real careful. Thank you and make sure you're good and safe. I was like, oh, okay. You know, we're in LA and you know, I just, my first time out there. So, okay, he's gonna make sure I'm safe. I didn't think nothing of it. And at that time, him and Pop were talking, things seemed a little antsy. He was more on edge than usual, Aaron. And so Aaron said he had to go to a meeting. That's why he couldn't, you know, take me to get my hair and nails done. And it was an important meeting and he couldn't miss it. So Pop's gonna hold me down. So I go to the salon. Aaron Hall had an important meeting. The door, the door. What Nori say? I don't know if it's a little homo. I don't know if it's a little sacrifice. That was the meeting Aaron had. You know, me and Pac had deep conversations. So it was the first time I've ever been alone with him and actually one-on-one. -on -one, I mean, he schooled me on life. He schooled me on becoming a mom. He schooled me on just so many things that I would never forget our conversation, ever forget our conversation about this industry. I mean, me being 17 and all this is in front of me and it's it's a wow, it's a wow factor. Mm -hmm. You know, all these celebrities and, you know, in the studio and video shoots and this man is so deeply spiritual, um, so mm -hmm. connected with, you know, himself and the worldly things that are going on. Um, he just knew so much and I'm grateful mm -hmm. that I got that opportunity to have with him. And then we met up with Aaron after I got my nails and, you know, um, hair done. We, we went to the hotel and Aaron's extra, you know, stress and, and pacing back and forth and him and... She went, he went to the meeting, the door. He was cool when he left, came back stressed. Start talking. So he's extra mean extra just everything and i felt like there was something going on it's more than just business mm. so to let you know allegedly when he was you know going to this meeting he was kind of pleading cut it out you know um mm. some of these people to be down with the cause you got to sacrifice people which is insane to me and mm. allegedly they told him, you know, there come a dime a dozen of her. You know, she could be replaced. I don't care if she What did she say? You have to sacrifice. Hold up. <laughs> did you not hear what she said? They told him that he had to sacrifice her. Yo, I swear to God, they jamming my device. Yo. Yo. Nah. No. Yo, they, yo. Y'all know I'm about to cook, right? Y'all know I'm about to cook, right? Where it's a door. It's a door. When you platinum and you're getting 50000 a show, I've been there. There's a door that you can walk in. I'm not sure if it's homo or if it's Illuminati. I just didn't take that though. I went straight. What do you, what do you mean? Listen, listen, listen. When you get to when you get to a level of success, when you get 30, 40, 50,000 a show, you platinum, you're running across the world. There's a there's three different doors, right? There's three different ways to walk. There's to the left, there's to the right, and then there's straight. So straight is your own, your own. Let's see if you continue this success, young man. Okay. Let's see if, if it's all about your skills, young man. Let's really see that. Okay. You went straight. To the right, I'm not sure if that's the homo shit right there. And then there's to the left. I'm not sure if there's some sacrifice shit going on right there. I'm not. She said she was supposed to be sacrificed. Nori told you that there was sacrifices. Yo, they got my device bugging. Okay. 
care if she's pregnant. You can get a pretty young thing and it's no big deal. So allegedly, he said, no, I'll be damned. I'm not going to do that. I love her. You know, I'll die for her. So they went back and forth and back and forth. And allegedly, it was said, it's going to happen if you like it or not. So he buys me a white dress to go to the event. Right? And the day... They told Aaron Hall that his 17-year-old girlfriend was going to be blood sacrificed and he still brought her to the event. Ooh, this is going to get deep. Of the event now, we're getting dressed and he's extra antsy and very mean to me. I mean, he was mean, but he was mean. And everybody knows he was, you know, violent. He was mean and he was violent. Everybody knows he was violent. Why are you being why are you being mean to this young woman that you bring into an event that they told you that they was going to sacrifice her at? Keep listening. Verbally, physically, emotionally. Um, but you gotta understand I was 17, naive, young, you know, so I loved him. You know, when you love someone, you make excuses for people, you know, you, you know, he treats you so well one minute and the next minute he could be so ugly. And then you, you hold on to the, the goodness in them, you know? So that's what I did throughout the violence in our relationship. So the day of we're getting dressed and we're leaving the hotel and we're waiting outside in front for our limo. And Casey and Jojo were standing outside waiting for their limo as well. And... Aaron was just being, just grabbing me and just being aggressive. And I hate this dress. And I'm like, you bought it for me. Like, what are you, like, you crazy? He's picking a fight so he could feel good about the kill. This grown ass man that was with this young ass girl. Somebody Google right now and find out how old Aaron Hall was in 1996. And drop it in the comment section. You know, like, what's going on? Like, why are you so, he was so angry. He wanted to, to argue with me, but I wasn't giving it to him. I was mm. not. There was something eerie in the air for me that it was just something different. And Casey and Jojo was talking to him and trying to calm him down and pray with him. So right there, that was kind of a God sent of angel, both of them trying to calm him down, pray with him, talk to him and trying to refocus his mind. So I say this. But so he was 32 years old and she was 17 and pregnant, which means he was with her when she was 16, 15 years old in his 30s. And he bringing her. Well, let me let them finish. I get to we go into the venue when he was pleading for my life and telling that you know he doesn't want nothing happening to me but he's still taking me to the venue you know I went over this over and over in my head why would he take me why would he put a white dress on me it's like you know dressing the lamb and giving her to the wolves you know what I'm saying mm. like are y'all listening how the industry Use the street. Yo, I'm not even. Oh, y'all don't even understand how I'm about to cook. Put a white dress on her. Used her man to line her up. The door. Never trust these industry niggas. You, you can't even trust the nigga trying to get into the industry because there's a door. And if a nigga can get you outside, he can line you. If a nigga, yo, if a nigga could get you outside, he could line you. My, everybody has different levels of love or how they should love someone. Obviously, he doesn't know how to love right. But I would never put my loved one in that situation knowing that there's, you're going into the wolves then. You know, you know what's going to happen. You know what they want to do. 
but you, you should have put, take me home on a plane or say, leave me alone, don't ever talk to me. I, I play that back over and over again, you know, the ride to the, I could like honestly remember how I felt, the scared young girl, you know, uh, petrified, uh, just emotionally distraught, but so in love with him at the time, like mm. literally in love with him. And, you know, I, I, I want to give them excuses. I, you know, that's what a lot of women do when you're abused. We give them excuses after excuses, but, you know, maybe he felt obligated to, you know, he wanted to be famous. He, he wanted them to be accepted, but this, you got to have limits and sacrifices, you know, mm. to want to be rich or to want to be famous. You got to have limits, you know, you can't, that right. limit of sacrificing a person shouldn't be ever. Right. So, um, how many times I keep telling y'all why I don't fuck with nobody in the industry. There is no room for Satanists at Jesus' table. The prophet of Nazareth and Galilee. There is no room for these people at Moses' table. There is no room at the prophet Yusuf, Joseph, his table. There's no room for these evildoers at the prophet Muhammad's table. Sacrifice. Y'all don't be listening to me when I be trying to tell you what they all keep telling you. All of these people are telling you the same thing. That when you get in this industry, that there's a door. Space now where I understand that doors open and behind those doors are other doors. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that wants to keep opening up the doors and I'm going to be with the people that get them open. That's it. It's quite simple. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? The nigga had to take a shot. Hit him in the head. Yo, hold up, hold up, hold up. All right. Here we go now. I'm going in. I come from a space now where I understand. Oh, no, 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 no. I want it froze. Now where I understand that doors open. And behind those doors are other doors. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that wants to keep opening up the doors. And I'm going to be with the people that get them open. That's it. It's quite simple. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Tell you, hear it. This industry is not what it seems to be. Listen, this is a rapper. You got 200 followers. I bet you there's rappers in here right now that can rap way better than you. You can't. You can rap way better than me. You will never be where I'm at because this industry is rigged. It's rigged. Yo, listen, you have to sit down with Spotify. Sit down with Apple. You have to do this interview. You have to. If you don't want to, you have to. You have to go see this person and sit down and talk to them. You have to go and do this. You have to. Yo, you, you gotta can, take the boxes. Literally, you could say, I don't feel like doing that. I don't even like that person. You have to. You're a puppet. You can't say such shit. Take that down. Take it down right now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll take it down. Don't say that. Y'all don't be listening to me when I be talking to you. Y'all don't be listening. You have to. You have to. Yo, every time, you notice, I don't think y'all noticed, the first time academics came to get me is when he had this, the, the, the scandal. So in order to break, because they was canceling him, the first time he put me on the show, I was controversial. When Takashi came and got me, he was banned from the industry. And from that day forth, he started doing shows. I was supposed to be they sacrifice. The only difference is at the time, my brother T Max just came home. And my team came with me. And we were strong. 
Them niggas was deep. But they said, they looked and they said, there's no way this is going to happen without somebody dying. Because in that building, it was a handful of us with some niggas outside and we was out there. We was there. Shout out to my brother T-Mac. Shit would have jumped off in that building. Somebody got to die. I was supposed to be sacrificed. Them niggas lied me. And because that sacrifice, where they were supposed to put me through a humiliation ritual, notice that Takashi 69 came to that meeting with a thousand gang members. Gang, gang, gang. Right? It's halftime right here. When I went to meet up with WAC, academics, oh, where's my charger? Oh, the power going out? Nah, we can't have the power die right now. Oh, no, nah, we cooking in this bitch. When I went to go meet up with them, I knew WAC 100 was lining me up. I'm on the phone with this nigga every day. It was too unreal for me. I'm acting like I'm a little kid around Santa Claus. And at the same time, like, this snake-ass nigga think I'm stupid recording every conversation. I never trusted him. I'm talking to Takashi 69 on the phone, and I'm sitting up there saying, why is it that this FBI informant that I think is part of the CIA, the youngest nigga part of the CIA, why is he reaching out to me? I'm never stupid. If my wife Make my toes throw up gang signs. I'm like, she about to kill me. <laughs> Nigga, when I come in my house, the first thing I'm doing is looking in closets and under the bed, make sure ain't nobody in my house lying to me. I'm a paranoid nigga. So I never trust nothing. I told y'all when B.O. died, Showbiz was standing right next to him, chasing a nigga that killed him with a gun in his hand, but never shot. Something, something just ain't right. But back to the story. When I went to go meet with Takashi and them, Takashi, I'm sitting at the table. I didn't know this nigga had 100,000 Secret Service men in the hallway. But the gang niggas was in the room and the door was closed. Because, let Wack tell it, that was my humiliation ritual. In order to get Takashi skyrocketed and academics was going through something where they was canceling him out, they brought me to the table. I was supposed to get beat up on camera. The footage was supposed to get leaked. It didn't happen. If highs, if niggas would have started swinging, how Wack kept saying he was sitting with his back against the wall, with his hand on his hammer. Well, Haas had, I had this powerful book that God gave me called the Bible. And it had some chapters from the Holy Quran in it. And once them niggas would have started thinking that they was going to set it. The whole room would, yo, I swear. You better, listen, man. One thing Mac could tell you. One thing Jerry would tell you. And all my, like my, my bigger brothers. My big brothers. One thing they'll tell you. You put this nigga back against the wall, somebody got to die. If I go, you got, like, niggas know me. Y'all don't. Y'all know her son, Campbell. Y'all better ask about Poppy. Whack 100 knew I was going to cook that whole room. So he gave me hugs and smiles and kisses. Yeah, 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 like everything was all good. I thought we was about to start, we, me and Whack 100, was about to, we were supposed to start my clothing line. That nigga said, he looked at T-Mac. He said, I know you from somewhere now. Mac, like, nah, you don't know me. I was in jail all these years. Is this the Ellis nigga in the front? Nah, I don't back down from nobody. The industry will line you. Niggas lined me. Then after they couldn't kill me or beat me up or line me up, Another nigga tried to line me too, but I ain't tell y'all about this one. When I went back on his show, but I'm going to save that one. Tried to line me. I just went to a shit too deep. 
Niggas thought they was going to humiliate me. Nigga, anytime I go anywhere now on anybody's platform, I'm going to have niggas with me. It's going to get crazy. But let's, let's get back. Now that I've entertained you with the truth, let's get back to this real shit that y'all want to act like it's fake. The door? The door. The door. Coming from a 17-year-old video vixen. One of the baddest in the game. We go in the car. We drive to the venue. We pull up. He grabs my hand. You know, the same thing he always says. Look at me. Don't look at no man. You know, an aggressive person that, uh, you know, super control is. You know, the same routine. We walk in. So when we walk in before we enter the venue, of all the people and the cameras and all the family that's sitting down at the tables, this old lady was walking out, at being escorted out, actually. Um, a mature lady, she was like in the 70s or 80s year old, um, had an entourage and she stopped Aaron and I. She grabbed my belly and I was only mm. four months, but super skinny. You couldn't even, I wasn't even showing. And she says, don't worry, your son is going to be all right. He's going to be healthy and he's going to be good, which we didn't know if we're having a boy or a girl. Mm. And she looks at Aaron and tells him, you know what? You be good to her and you protect her. And she prayed on us. That's God. God sent an angel right there because his whole demeanor changed. Because mm. he was trying to get it. The bitch was no angel. She let you know that the nigga you two with, with. She let you know that the nigga that she was with, he was a sucker. But let me let them finish. So I, I'm speaking too soon. In a car. He was trying to start a fight. Maybe to justify what's going to happen or was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I... So that 32-year-old Aaron Hall started a fight. He knew she was supposed to die. Let me tell you something. Even my, like, even like some of my ugliest girlfriends, and I say in look, because the majority of my women were, were beautiful, like bad. We getting older now, so y'all be like, oh, y'all ugly, washed up. But my, all my shorties was bad. My face baby mother now, she was a little... But nevertheless, you take any woman that I've ever been with and you put them in a situation when I think they're going to die and this is going to be the day that they're going to die, you're going to get the best character out of me that you've ever seen because I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm never going to see you again. This nigga flipping on her. that over and over in my mind like if that lady didn't stop or you know she didn't say a prayer or Casey and Jojo didn't pray outside the the hotel you know that was God sending him like you know what are you doing Aaron you know what I mean you know of God you know what I mean you come from mm. church right, so we right. walk into the venue cameras you know video cameras taking pictures so we greet people and still by his side we walk into the back of the venue you know because there's a stage, and so we walk in the back of the stage. Mm -hmm. He pulls a chair to the side of, of, you know, you know, you see the stage, and this is the back entrance when you know when you when you're performing and you're waiting to go on stage. So he puts a chair, sit here. I said okay, but he was serious and aggressive. I was like, damn, he's like, <laughs> I'm still have no idea. I'm oblivious of what's going on or what's going to happen or what they tend to do. This female like runs towards Aaron. And then he walks her halfway, grabs her, and they start talking, and they're in each other's face. So a 17-year-old's mind, you know what I'm thinking? They fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right? She's approaching, she's screaming something. Right. Oh, I As y'all listen to this, y'all better share, share this motherfucking video. The words of Nino Brown, share this motherfucking video. Think about, please listen to me. Listen to what she's saying and think about King Vaughn's situation. Listen to what she's saying and think about takeoff situation. Listen. Y'all feeling me? Are you feeling me? Talk to me in the comment section. Are you feeling me? Am I talking to myself? I know we got 5,100 people in the building. Are y'all feeling me? Yes or no? Talk to me. I'm looking. 
Are you feeling me? Think about the King Vaughn situation. Think about takeoff situation. Think about the way T Tupac died. Think about the way Biggie died. This is the industry. Welcome to 50 years of hip hop. Listen to her. Here, I'm pregnant. Right. You know, she's upset. Aaron's a hoe. You know, he's a nasty man. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> so right, 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 right. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I was, what's so crazy and mind boggling to me, like, I would never hit Aaron back, even though he was physically, you know, physical with me. But anybody else that would that would confront me, I would fight. I was a fighter. I I, I was brave. But with him, mm. I didn't. I didn't step up for myself until I had my child. Then I was like, enough is enough. But so when she was screaming, and I was like, well, bitch, let's go, you know. So mm. that was my mentality. That's hot. Even though I was pregnant, I was like, let's go, bitch. So I'm thinking Aaron's fucking her. She's upset. I'm here. He brought me here. So the mood changed. People started moving towards Aaron and I men and then i said oh this is it felt eerie i said something's different this is not uh mm. you know i'm fucking your man this is some it felt different hold up something don't feel right about this now the spidey senses because when we younger we got them spidey senses but when we get older we start putting all this food in our body all this alcohol in our body all the weed in our body and you think you want point but you're not that, that's why most niggas that get locked up get locked up while they drunk or high. Because you're not on point. The weed don't put you on point. It just makes you think fast. So now she's putting the pieces to the puzzle. Imagine if King Vaughn was thinking the way she's thinking. But let me get back to her. I don't, oh my God, I'm, I'm thinking too fast. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because these deaths... And this music industry is not what it seems. Why you think, every, yo, let me tell you something. If I told you the celebrities that I spoke to on the phone, I couldn't. Because I promised some of them that I wouldn't. See, if I told you the celebrities that they reached out to me, you know when you're hard you feel right, something right, right, right. Okay. and then so i shut up quick i just i i like was looking at the room and seeing i'm trying to figure out what the fuck's really going on because i mm. see the fear now in aaron's face like shut the fuck up you know what i mean so mm. i see the fear that it's more than just they fucking right so within the commotion and people started moving towards and you see the dudes pop runs he runs towards aaron grabs up the girl and says, nobody fucking touch her, points to me. And he goes, she's family, she's Aaron's wifey. Nobody, I told you nobody fucking touches her. So I looked and I was like, the, my mind's like, what the fuck is going on? He drags her out the side of the door. You know, there's always like back entrance to, to lead outside. And it was, it was a back entrance and a lot of people follow. When Pac moves, people follow. Mm. And they followed him outside. And then Aaron stand in front of me like a guard dog. He was like, don't move, don't say shit. I'm like, yeah, there is, I was, I had no idea what was going on. So we waited patiently until Pac came inside. And, you know, my heart's racing because, you know, your senses tell you something's wrong, that oh, this is oh. not right. You know, especially the people that you see around in the back. Pac knew she was going to be sacrificed. How did Pac know that? Because Pac went through the door of homosexuality. That's why they scrubbed the... In Yo, Pac went through the door of homosexuality. They scrubbed the internet of the videos where Pac was frustrated because I guess whoever... like First and foremost... Pac was insulted because Quincy Jones wanted a, piece, wanted a piece of Pac's ass. But rumors has it, allegedly, I don't know if this is true. I'm not saying this is true. But rumors has it that Puff and Pac, and Pac was doing a thing. No matter what, Pac went through a door. Pac knew that there was going to be a sacrifice. My brother's in jail 18 years for doing dumb shit while smoking on that K2 they had the Delhi in, in 2011, 2012. 
Now they selling weed in stores and more efforts is getting fooled again. Yep, they are. But back to topic. Pac went through the door of homosexuality. Pac saved this girl. And he was able to save her because he was part of the meeting of the sacrifice. He knew how the sacrifice was going to go down. He knew how the sacrifice was going to go down. And he stopped it because he was at the meeting. Are y'all listening? Are you fucking listening? You can't stop a sacrifice unless you know that it's going down. You can't stop a sacrifice unless you're part of it. You got an argument going on. A woman sees a man, right? Staged. Aaron Hall is arguing with a woman. Gloria says something is not right about this argument. It's weird to her. Normally she would fight because she's a fighter, but this is weird. Pac comes out, grabs her, and says, don't nobody touch her. Because it was staged. The whole event with Gloria was staged. It was supposed to be a gang violence. A gang fight with his girl in the white dress. Where everybody knew the girl in the white dress was supposed to die. Somebody got to die. If I go, you got to go. Do you see how these rappers die? Eminem. Had a video that depicted Proof's death the same way in a real life video. The door, the door is real. The door. That's a door. Biggie, everybody that you listen to the interviews, everybody said Biggie didn't want to go to California. Puff made him. The door, the door. Puff made him. Biggie's not here no more. Pac's not here no more. King Vaughn went to an event. He was in the car sleeping. They woke him up. He jumped out of a car angry, fighting, got shot by the police. Now, little Tim is the illest nigga in Nebraska. And everybody from Old Block that vowed, everybody from Old Block that vowed to make sure they killed anybody that had anything to do with King Vaughn is in the feds. Little Dirk, one minute, he's sitting up there teaching y'all to pray. And the next minute, he's showing y'all blood side. He's showing y'all satanic rituals on his albums. You can't serve two masters, Little Dirk. If I was Little Dirk's father, I would get the hell away from Little Dirk before he sacrificed his father next. Because his father think he's going to save him with Islam. You're not. Your son is too gone. Tag little Dirk father. You can't save your son. He's too gone. He can't serve two masters. I know you love your son, but your son is playing with Satan and the law at the same time. That's a deadly combination. It's not like we're in blue tuxedos, you know, we're in an all white party. You know, we got some thugs, we got some gangsters, you know, it's real life shit that can go pop off. And okay. I got that, but I didn't know how real it was going to get or mm. what they wanted to do, I should say. So Pac comes in and comes up to us and be like, you know, you guys are good. Um, and looks at Aaron and says, don't stay long. Like dead up like that, don't stay long. And then hugged us and then went on stage. And he's, he's very, he's, oh my God. Mm. Not knowing at that point he was my angel, he saved my life. I mean, I'm happy that Aaron stood up and grabbed and he was like, no, you know, but I'm mad that he brought me there anyways, you know, because mm. he had a choice. You know, mm. God always gives you a choice. Demons always give you a fucking choice. Mm -hmm. You know, that was his choice to bring me there to those wolves, you know, mm -hmm. a lamb 17 and pregnant. Yeah. So maybe he was contemplating with himself. I don't know if he was battling himself, but Pac saved my life. And mm. I'm grateful that he saved my life. And we stood for a little while and we said goodbye. And before we said goodbye and left, um, one of the demons came up to me and said, you're blessed. 
you know, mm -hmm. and said a bunch of other things that I will not say, but I mean, I was looking a demon in the eyes, you know, mm -hmm. he was telling me that you almost got got and I felt it in my soul. Like mm -hmm. when he stared at me and looked at me and was like, oh, you, you just, you just passed, you almost died. Like, and I felt it. Like I felt, I felt his aura, his heaviness. You feel that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then we left and then we went to the hotel. He didn't go to any other recordings. He didn't go to any other video shoots. And we went on a plane and left a few days later. We never turned around. And then four months later, Pop dies. And mm. I was, I was devastated, you know, because. Mm -hmm. Moment of silence. Four months later, Pac stacked, he stopped that sacrifice. So he became that sacrifice. Four months later, he died. Images of Tupac in the car the night he got killed. Tupac looked like this shit felt familiar. Tupac looked like this shit feels familiar. Look at Suge's face. Lights, camera, action. Gloria was one of the top models ever. So much to the point to where that at some point in time, she was um, Aaron Hall's baby mother. She was pregnant at 17, which means he was sleeping with her at 16, 15 when he was in her 30s. Do you not understand that when I get into 50 years of hip hop and I show you the ugliness behind the shit that these sucker niggas, these old washed up. Yo, how they said Harriet Tubman said she would have freed more slaves if they realized they were slaves. I would have freed more street dudes from the streets if I could have got rid of these old ass washed up street dudes. Niggas ain't, man. While these niggas was crip, all these niggas that's coming home talking about they crip, 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 crib, right? All these 40 year old niggas that was going to jail when the bloods was ringing, right? That's crip right now, right? Not the young boys. I don't have no smoke with the young ones. The older ones that was catching bodies in the street. Ask these niggas, was they claiming Crip and jail? Where the Bloods was at? When I was GKB, when Doggy Dog blooded me in the box, because Breezy, Sent them, the brief vulture, sent them to my cell to blood me in, right? When I was blood on Rikers Island, and them niggas asked me, what are you going to do? Because I was blood and Muslim. Let me tell y'all a little story, right? Most of the Muslims turned blood later on because it was a war, and Muslims wasn't really on Rikers Island wilding out like that. In the majority of the jails. You had to go up north 
where the Muslims were situated. On Rikers Island, the Muslims were soft. So they would ask me after making Salat, because this is my religion, and God is going to get me out of jail. What you going to do when the Muslims is beefing with the, with the bloods? And half these sucker niggas that was asking me that used to be Muslim, but threw their God in the garbage for protection. So they used to ask me that question. And I said, don't ask me that question because you don't want me to answer it. Even so much to where that when I got to downstate from Rikers Island, me and Scar, Scar blood, Scar can tell, was going to get it on. Me and Scar was going to get it on a thousand times. Scar just knew that he wasn't going to do what he wanted to do to me because the way he was cutting up a niggas, I was going to cut him back. When Scar sitting up there, why you sitting on the Musella with the Muslims when you should be with the Bloods? Stop playing with me. Don't nobody come before nobody comes before a law. Nobody. See, I hate the fact that I was Muslim because I wasn't deeming. And I hate the fact that I was Muslim because Islam chases people away and I knew I needed to reach out to my people. So I don't really preach to y'all like that. But there's a door. And clear as day, all of these niggas that worship Satan is calling you to the house of Satan. You are mesmerized by Satan's door. The industry is Satan's door. You are mesmerized by these rappers. Everything ain't always what it be, seems to be. The police used to target rappers. Now they escort Fat Joe with his crew through the city. The mayor gave Fat Joe a personal do not touch. And others. Jim Jones is a CIA agent. Jim Jones is on records. He's on. Yo, Jim Jones done ordered hits. And I'm sorry. Because I, prom I promised that I can't. But it'd be hard. Jim Jones ordered a hit. Or Takashi 69, who's a CIA agent. Jim Jones didn't even know that Takashi 69 was CIA and ordered a hit on him and instructed people to attack a CIA agent and didn't go to jail. And y'all niggas act like y'all don't see this? Ant Live, I'm sorry. I know I promised you I won't bring that nigga up, but the alcohol got me. Takashi 69 is the youngest CIA agent ever who brought down non-trade gangsters. Jim Jones is on a wiretap ordering a hit on a CIA agent and don't do a day in jail. And Mano is sitting down with the fucking mayor. Y'all not feeling me? Y'all not feeling me? Takashi 69 is the youngest CIA agent, FBI informant. Ever took down the whole non trade. The little nigga infiltrated the whole team, brought them up and brought them down. Why nobody have nothing to say about? So you telling me that Jim Jones ordered a hit on a CIA FBI agent, Takashi 69. And didn't do a day in jail? And now Mayor, now Mano is running around with the mayor? And after he sat down with the mayor, the whole Brooklyn got locked up. Fat Joe sitting down with the top cop. The mayor is an ex-cop. The top cop became mayor. And Mano sitting down at the table with him? And now you want to be on Instagram sitting up there, sitting down with your kids. Now you want to show, because y'all studying me. Remember when there was so much celebrity gossip that everybody was getting paid? And now all the celebrities is trying to get rid of the YouTubers because we exposing how wicked, the, I mean, the, the rappers, the YouTubers is, is attacking. The YouTubers is exposing the rappers. And we getting rich now while the rappers is broke. These niggas don't show you their house, but they show you the projects. 
These niggas don't show you they house, but they show you the projects. So they watch the lives with me showing their kids. Now they want to show their kids at water parks. These niggas are snakes. So when I showed y'all my house, they took my monetization. Like now nah, we're going to make this nigga lose his house. Now with 5,100 people in this building, because I ain't get a check in six months. My ribs is touching. My kids got to eat. I got to pay for schools, cars, houses. That's right. 5,100 people in the building. Drop a dollar in this goddamn comment section. One dollar. Feed the wolves. Clamish G. Pac had to blink twice. If you help, you help, you, you help look. And that car with Shug, love and light, how's cook my cook, my man. Thank you for sponsoring this war. We got 5,100 people in the building. Drop me a dollar. Y'all see what I'm fighting, right? I got visions of these niggas lying to me the same way. Y'all not gonna sponsor this war, or y'all just gonna cry when I die. And these niggas laugh. I refuse to bite my tongue. I hate this industry. Get a job. I don't need a job. You watching me, bitch nigga. <laughs> get a job. You get a job. I don't need one. You get a job. I don't need one. Quote 7, thank you. 7-Eleven, I respect you, Haas. Thank you, fam. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Now, you get a job, sucker. Night, night, nugga. <laughs> Y'all don't see it? King Vaughn in the club, in, in the car. Damn shame. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Uh-oh. Vin, thank you for sponsoring this war. T, thank you for sponsoring this war. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I guess the people fighting back. Uh-oh, you go get a job. <laughs> you go get a job. <laughs> I guess the people speaking, huh? You can fake your death in Vegas. Pac took the door. Of course he took the door. Of course he took the door. In order for him to stop, to, to, to stop that sacrifice, he had to know about that sacrifice. Naturally yours. Toronto, Canada, thank you for enlightening the minds of those who still want to play fantasy land. Sponsoring this war. Shout outs to you, family. Hit him in the Nate House. What up, Haas? Had a lot ha had to log out and log back in to donate, big homie. Oh, they doing us they doing, of course, they doing us dirty. Uh-oh. Falami Moon. Thank you, family. New Fest Taylor interview. I got arrested at jury duty for murder. The Sodium Podcast, wow. J3. Tracy. Aqua Lord. Wish I could give you more, fam. Thanks for everything you do. Hit him in the head with the headshot. Y'all don't understand, man. In order to grow up in the streets in the 90s, the way I grew up, you had to be grimy. You have to have the edge. You have to recognize a cutthroat before he cuts your throat. Trading war stories, one of my favorite top of Tupac songs. You traded war stories. Outlaws on the rise, jealous niggas I despise, look in my eyes. You and Sub-Zero need to do a live together. Shout out to Sub, Sub my dude. Tracy, thank you, I appreciate you family. Sim, thank you family. Sim, Simmer, who got the keys to my Beamer? And signing out with Gloria. In 
the beginning, I didn't know that he saved, saved my life. I know he saved maybe an ass whipping because it looked like more than one wanted to kick my ass. But I didn't know the reason that they wanted to, you know, leave me to die. You know, the setup mm. allegedly was to make it look like a gang thing, you know, beat her up to death, you know, and leave me on the side of the road somewhere. Mm. So that's what allegedly they were supposed to do and whatever else, because there was dudes approaching. So it wasn't just a female, you know, she had dudes with her. What was her purpose? And the female. To drive was... me out to start it off, to start it off. Mm. Remember, it's all about a look. So it's got to look like gang related, grabbing up another girl, dragging her out of the venue. And then whatever dudes and the guys beat me up, rape me, whatever they want to do and leave me on the side of the road for dead. So that was the plan. That's what mm. they wanted to do. Any of y'all YouTubers that know how to edit, I gave y'all homework because I gave y'all a, a masterpiece. Now y'all can edit this shit and put this shit together. When you sit back and you analyze how King Vaughn died, her whole death was staged. Tupac stopped it. King Vaughn's whole death was staged with Little Tim and Quando Rondo. It was staged. Y'all don't see it? <coughs> Y'all don't see it? Oh, so you just think King Vaughn with that ring on. Every rapper that wore that ring is dead. Every rapper that put that ring on is dead. What y'all don't get it? The life insurance po yo. I you, we can't wake everybody up. As long as my people get it. And see what y'all gotta understand is right. This industry have street niggas connected to street niggas. Tracy Hickman, thank you, family. Appreciate you. This industry got street niggas. You see how Fat Joe running around with all the niggas that still tied into the streets? Sprinkling money around? Nigga, government. And the crazy part about it is there's multiple homicides that Fat Joe told on where the federal government is hiding his paperwork. But I ain't going to even get into that. Because without the paperwork, you can't prove nothing. But with the feds, there's not always paperwork. So now do y'all understand that I'm actually getting ready to face off with real killers in the street? Because the industry has street niggas to do their dirty work. Bill Gates ain't never pulled the trigger. Fauci ain't never pulled the trigger. These niggas is nerds. The niggas that's running around in the streets like they Magilla Gorilla Killers ain't never. These niggas is whack. Because on a high up level, you're nothing. Keep going, my brother. Most definitely. That is what it is, man. Sometimes niggas don't even realize what they realize what they say. Sometimes the devil will let the devils tell on themselves. Because if you tell people the truth, they can't really, really hear what's going on. They don't believe it. Now nah, this is a lie. Now that 17-year-old girl wasn't really there with a 32-year-old man. Welcome to hip hop. Aaron Hall, one of the best R&B singers ever. God, groove me, baby, tonight. But y'all in love with these artists. My niggas don't dance, they just pull up their pants and do the rock away. What? And lean back, lean back, lean back. Nigga ain't got one hit but got a $4 million watch. Who sent you? Nigga ain't got one hit. But got a $4 million watch? Who sent you? Was it Gail or Oprah? You know the same chicks that got all those houses, all that property on Hawaii, and none of their shit got burnt? Ooh, the connection. Key Chattel, sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, sexy. Thank you. Who sent you? I want the ugly truth or a beautiful lie. 
But y'all want the ugly truth or a beautiful lie? You know how many people really watching us right now? Yo, I guarantee you it's about 40 or 50,000 people actually watching us right now saying this nigga right here is different. The ring with the star, the most definitely the star represents Osiris, the god of death. Black Avatar, thank you for sponsoring this war. I guarantee you, yo, I guarantee you, and as soon as I said that, they start pulling people out of the live. We had 5,000 as soon as I said that for three hours and 31 minutes straight. I said I got to spend time with my people tonight. Hit the like button, people. Huh? Hit the like button. Or just keep dropping the dollars in the super chat. We got 4,900 people in the building. If everybody drops a dollar, huh? you know what that's going to go towards? Me making sure when I go to war, I got a team of niggas that's going to die for me because I'm going to take care of the poor niggas around me. I can't trust nobody right now. See, sometimes in life, you got to test people to see where they at, right? When I broke down on that internet and I told the world with KRS-1, did and said about me and called me an agent some people didn't know that some people doubled down on still standing next to KRS-1 and saying fuck me now these same niggas will tell you they'll kill the world if somebody touched their child but I was a child and they ain't standing next to me so when you see them standing next to KRS-1 or supporting him, just know that you're dealing with a sucker. And I want y'all to understand that Satan got strong soldiers too. The devil got strong soldiers too. Some of these niggas already picked the devil's side. There's a war. And they don't care what happened to me. And they clearly making it clear to me, whatever happens on that battlefield is going to happen. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Sean Karma, thank you for sponsoring this war. How many times these people got to tell you about this industry? They telling you. And the industry is allowing them to tell you. Because, it, oh, here's the rules, right? Before they cause destruction on you, they leak the truth out themselves. So you call it conspiracy. Before doomsday and destruction comes, they have to give you, it's the laws of the universe. It's universal law. So they'll leak the information out. And because it's leaked out, you'll call it conspiracy and you won't listen to it. But yet all of these artists is telling you, like you don't listen. Yo, I could, yo, I could do this for days and days and days. Meek Mills told you. What did Meek tell you? About that stuff, they actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. So I make sure I even align and come talk on stages like this. But you guys, the NAACP open up doors for people like me to be able to power forward because the things that fund us, that don't power me forward. You know, I just make sure, because I know better and I'm at an age point, I'm 36. They power is really went from when we 21 to 25 when we really don't know. Then we get. They target you from 21 to 25 and use them young kids to destroy each other. They sponsored, they sponsored drill rap. Do you listen? Are you listening? Are you listening to them telling? Meek is telling you. Now, I'm not telling you. This is the rich telling you. His whole life, the money that he made, they paid him to put an evil message out there to keep you dumb. If you built this world, if you were galactic people, if you had the technology, if you had the technology, to create weapons of mass destruction, why are you on the block smoking weed? Why are you not a scientist? Why are you not in the lab? 
Why are you not pulling gas from the earth? Why are you not creating the next flying car? Because they want you dumb. The dumbest thing that ever happened to black people was rappers. The dumbest thing that ever happened to black people was rappers. You was never supposed to be somebody that just wanted to inspire your whole life to be a rapper. If that was a talent that you had, you were supposed to still be nice at it, but, but exploring other avenues in life. We ruled this fucking galactic world. We ruled the galaxies. We traveled from planets. We conquered planets. Now they got you on a street corner rapping. They even got rich rappers going to the broke-ass Bronx with cameramen filming, filming them in the Bronx in poverty rapping because that's what they sell on your stupid ass. Are you not entertained? Damn, y'all niggas is dumb. You gotta be stupid to believe planets don't exist. But I tell you one thing, this world we living in, God bless you, Highs. Keep standing on truth. In a world full of liars, I believe God sent people to wake people up. I wish I could send more. Stay dangerous. Thank you, family. I appreciate you. Free Max B for what? So he could come home another dumbass 50-year-old rapper? For what? For what? The world don't need another rapper. We don't need another rapper. That's why we failing as a people. Because everybody want to rap. Ain't nothing worse than a nigga coming home from jail. 40 or 50 years old. And his only plan is to rap. What? Take the what and leave the what? A rapper? A rapper? The fuck is your lyrics going to pay my bills? Can you pay my bills? No. A rapper? Jimmy, come in the mouth of the Nah. No. 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 Ew. Ew. Can it wipe his butt? All rappers do is eat, sleep, and shit. The broke ones. What about Q-Tip, Jada, Biggie? Got off them corners. Pac stood on the streets. And why they couldn't take him? Love High Chicago, Milwaukee. Listen, man. One thing I say about Q-Tip... Charles Harris, thank you for sponsoring this ball. One thing I say about Q-Tip. Q-Tip never put out poisonous music. Whatever thoughts Q-Tip had, you don't see Q-Tip running around being an ignorant man. You don't see Q-Tip coming back to the hood. LL Cool J. LL Cool J is hard as hell. Battle with everybody. LL Cool J represented hip-hop. You don't see LL Cool J... Selling you poison. I don't care what LL Cool J Forts was in the past. As a man, we not seeing him being in the streets, being immature. No, LL Cool J, Rakim, follow the need of Rakim or say. You see Rakim, he performs, shows you a, a grown man. He goes home as a grandfather. Mano, old ass clown. Now he want to show you his kids after he done poisoned you for years. This shit is sad. New York rappers been destroyed so bad. What do you see? Jim Jones, Mano, Fabulous, and um, what's the other one? Davies. I love Davies. I love Fab. I like Jim Jones' music better than Mano's. Mano got about two songs that I like. No disrespect, but I'm being real. 
They destroyed hip hop so bad. Fab is an A-lister rapper. A-lister. Platinum artist. Standing next to D-list rappers. They put him in a dirty... They put him in a dirty group to survive. Now in order for Fab to survive, he got to run around looking like the four horsemen. Fab don't even look like Fab no more. And I'm sorry. Fab don't even look like Fab no more. Running around with Mano. How you but how Fab let himself become the little nigga? Mano's the rapper nobody never wanted to hear. That bullied his way in the industry. But somewhere, somehow, they played him a couple of times. Nobody has ever in the, in the kingdom of Megadom played Mano songs, ever. Nobody has never. I tell you right now. I'll play a Fat Joe song, a thousand of them, before I play. But Mano got, Mano had to get next to Uncle Murder. And shout out to my brother Lucky Dawn, but I got to be real. I was mad as hell when Lucky Dawn became a part of Mano's Black Flag. Lucky Dawn, when you got next to Mano, he fucked your whole momentum up. You was hot. Then you got part of his Black Flag and messed your whole movement up. Now you gonna sit next to him again? Mano's is Mano. Listen, Mano got kitchen talk. His best videos with celebrities couldn't even add up to my worst videos. Haas had over a billion views streaming on YouTube. I took all my video, my videos down, and still, Mano can't Mano can't go live with five thousand people watching him by himself on YouTube. We ain't talking about bum ass Instagram. We talking about the big stage. YouTube is TV. It's to do it for the grand. Do it for the grand. No. These niggas are scared of my power. They scared of it. I was mad as hell when Lucky Dawn didn't stay in his own lane. Mano was a failed rapper. Now he's a failed blogger that got to get next to Angela Yee. And the shit that pissed me off with about Mano, because I like Mano but don't like Mano. Like, dogs, why you wait to the end of your music career to start showing your children? Now you got to clean it up? Now you got to clean it up? Go sit your ass back down next to the mayor. Go sit in the corner next to the mayor. You and Fat Joe, go sit down next to the mayor. Go sit next to the mayor. I'm not beefing with niggas because I'm jealous of them. I'm beefing with niggas because they sold your kids. Niggas was 45 years old, 46, 47, 48 years old, calling themselves lobby boys. 50 years old. Their career is over now. It's over. The world is almost over. They sold you the hood. Now he wants to show you him at Atlantis with his children. That we never even knew he had. What? Take the what? How many children went to jail? Following these buster ass niggas. Nah, nigga, I don't want to be friends. I want to be friends with nobody. When y'all seen her song Campbell apologizing all over the internet, you see me apologizing all over the internet. Because my friends is connected to these niggas. Now I don't want no friends. I don't want to apologize to Satan's army. It's either you with me or you ain't. Ride out, nigga. Ride out. Everybody can't always walk with you on your journey. In order for you to see a, 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 a hero. You ready for this? Hey, black people. My people people of the sun in order for you to find a hero you gotta find a white man in a white movie black men don't save black children black men don't save black women in order for you to find a hero you better go find the avengers you better go look for the avengers 
The closest thing that you're going to find in a superhero, when you watch a, when you watch white movies, you always see some dope-ass movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Well, Denzel give us some good ones, but the truth of the matter is, every time a black man make a movie, a hood novel, respect, my, respect life, money and violence, all we can do is depict us killing us. And we don't see no problem with that. All we could do is depict us killing us. And we don't see no problem with that. Vibe be so off in some of the black clubs, man. We really be in there trying to have a good time listening to 30 straight serial killer songs. Like, we really in there trying to have a good time and vibe out to murder music. What we in there hypnotized, we never all done lost somebody to violence. That's why we all in there on the verge of socking some shit. But we keep listening to serial killer music. These young mad ass niggas talk about hitting somebody with a switch. Man, 30 click, slide, slide, slide. Man, we in there drunk. We really hypnotized listening to this devil ass shit. I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't like some of the music, but it be like, man, how's we partying? Trying to have a good time listening to murder music. This shit is psychopath shit, for real. Like, I mean, the we gotta start switching it up, man. Something gotta change, cause that shit is really like, it blow my mind. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I mean, I if you support me, please support me on Patreon.com, Hassan Campbell. If you support me, please support me on Rumble. Sooner or later, they're going to take this channel. I need y'all to follow me everywhere on, on the other platforms to support me. They're going to take this channel from me. Y'all do realize that I'm the enemy of the state, right? Light skin and all niggas got to stick together. They think we soft, got to respect him being um, thorough like Nick was, Malcolm X. Come on, man. Them niggas did the same niggas. The same niggas that did Nipsey Hussle was the same niggas that tried to whack 100. Like, do y'all really understand? Hold up. Damn, I didn't even know it was 1 o'clock in the morning. Danny Lee, brother, that's your people? Danny Lee? No, I saw your post. You said something about this about family. Nah, I ain't say he my family. Yeah, I was just going to say, all right, he better stop playing. They going to knock him down. Hell no, that nigga ain't my family. I did, I just I just actually uploaded the video. I was uploading my videos yeah, for the day. He better stop playing, bro. He's lucky he got out of there last night. He better stop playing. He went by himself. Nigga, he better stop playing, bro. He got lucky they was on that slippery ass floor, cause you know how it would have went. Nah, he, he definitely lucky. He definitely lucky. If they would have caught him outside, they would have did him. More audio from me and Wack 100 to be on my Patreon, Patreon.com. Hassan Campbell. I told y'all, y'all don't even understand, man. Orain Campbell, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this wall. Y'all don't even understand, man. The industry tried to line me already. Why would ask yourself a question? Why would WAC 100 reach out to me? Why? The nigga's a millionaire. The whole industry ignored me, but that gatekeeper came to meet with me. I didn't even know that they had gatekeepers. And to Charleston White sat down with the white boy, I forget his name. I didn't even know that they had gatekeepers on YouTube. I always thought that they did. But then when I found myself breaking through a little bit, I was thinking to myself, Maybe you could do it on your own. Because I literally was on here fighting for seven years. On my own. Seven years. And as soon as I sit down with them, they start destroying my platform. What am I saying that got their attention? Yeah, there's a door.
I want everybody that's in the building to hit that like button. Because every time I go live, I'm being mass flagged. Every time I go live, there's certain YouTubers that take certain portions of my videos to smear me in a campaign or to talk to the algorithm so they can slow my videos down. We've been in this building consistent with between 5,000 and almost 6,000. We didn't hit 6,000 a night. People watching for the whole night. I'm not giving y'all five hours tonight. I'm almost at four, and I think I'm bugging. But I'm not even done with this message. Part two of this shit gonna be real. Make sure y'all go support me on Patreon, on my Patreon, on patreon.com, Hassan Campbell. Make sure y'all go over to Rumble, because when I fall back, or they take this shit. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta be still be able to follow me. The war don't stop. This is their platform. This is their world. Instagram poppy from BX River. It is what it is, man. I can't believe we still rocking. Y'all want me to keep going, or should I sign out? I tell y'all what. Y'all get the likes to four thousand. I keep on going. If not, I'm out. Y'all better show me y'all love me. Y'all better show me y'all love me. Hit that, hit me. Yeah, y'all better hit that like button. Show me y'all love me. Give me the reason to love you, man. Give me the Tell me to be the forget. Let me tell y'all something, right? Another thing, too. I think I'm done with the video vixen shout out to her for telling her story real talk Hussain Hassan thank you for sponsoring this war y'all better hit that like button y'all think I'm playing In the morning times, in the morning, I'm going to start going live on Real Topics with Hassan, which is my YouTube page. I'm going to start going live on my Real Topics with Hassan page. I will be playing certain people's music to support them. I support up and coming people. I support other artists. I support people that I love. Now, if you're not part of my team and you ask me to play my music, you definitely better be subscribed to my Instagram pages, which is Poppy from BX River and Snotbox TV. And you most definitely, if you want me to play your music, you definitely better be subscribed to my Patreon and my Rumble. If not, don't even ask me to listen to your bum ass music. You're being disrespectful. You want me to support you, you better support me. If you want me to support you, you better support me. One hand washed over. Y'all niggas be all up in my DM talking about, oh, I want you to listen to this song for what? You're not even following me. You came in my DM, you're not even following me, and you asking me to listen to your song? Throw your song in the trash. You listen to this song. Yo, her song. Yo, hi, man. What's good, bro? How you, bro? You all right? Yeah, shout yeah, out to you, hit that bro. Like button. I'm always keeping it real, oh, you I'm know? logging out keeping after the end of this song. Well, you know? might as well add on to that real quick. A little something for you and your, and your um, viewers. You know, since they just been uh, keeping it a hundred. Y'all saw, let me ask you something. They be claiming they apes. If they really gorillas then, how come Zimmerman still walking around and ain't none of them get at them? Separation is reparations in this affirmation. Case closed, no investigation. It is what it is, no explanation. Y'all over there praying that y'all gonna be saved. 
we ain't one in the same. He's a field nigga, he's a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. I'd rather be under a grave than under a man that come from a cave. So I'm off to get guns and grenades, but I'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm on my Django, like Jamie Foxx. Sharpshooter when I aim these shots. They like, here come the pigs, and I'm like, good, cause I came for the cops. I bang on my opposition, hip hop's been glitching since Pac's been missing. That's why none of y'all got my attention, it's repetition, I ain't gotta listen. Cause I already know what it is. Y'all flow, gonna be flowing like his, talking about how you're ruling the bins. I know how it's starting, I know how it ends. Wait, ain't you married? How you rapping about all the moves you got? And the clothes you rock with, you need to stop. Cause nigga, those ain't hot. Man, y'all tripping. Got these Chinese niggas frying y'all chicken. And they don't even look like chicken. Fuck around and it's probably a pigeon. God forgive them. They don't know no better. They probably a Christian, a Muslim, a hoodlum. To the system, there's no difference. I don't understand it. How you blacker than me talking about you Hispanic? Spanish your language. We the same issues. Your mind's been damaged. Where this Nadie? I'm from the Ando. I'm from the Kanye. They call it like Kanye. But I'm on that shit they don't teach you in Georgia. I'm criminal minded. You can tell I'm a dawn by the women I ain't with. I maneuver like Heinlein. But the pressure on the stomach come from my nine inch. I probably ain't catch it. So rewind, then that part is highly suggested. I'm possessed because my women possessive. I'm blessed, and this is a blessing. You niggas gonna learn today. This is a lesson. Going to church ain't gonna get you in heaven. Nigga, your rebel's a felony. Taking your money and swelling your melon. Me, yeah, I'm a rebel, that's why I'm rebelling. Somebody gotta say it, so I'ma tell them. Had knowledge yourself since I was 11 and taught my son by the time he was seven. I'm the best man, though I'm not at your wedding. I hope them get on. They ain't gotta get credit. I'm tipsy or for nipsy. I'm a hustle. Until I get it, I see where y'all going, that's not where I'm headed I'm taking a different direction, so no We can do a record, and just for the record I actually feel disrespected for you even thinking I would be shaking, down to your level Clown, you a pebble Trying to smell what the rock is cooking Cause you heard I set up shop in Brooklyn But it's still BX to the death of me They got ingredients, I got the recipe I hope you die in your sleep That goes for all my foes that ever slept on me Niggas, stay wrong <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you niggas wanna hear this what the fuck you need to hear. <laughs> Stay woke. Huh? I said, no time for sleeping. The enemy creeping and we can't defeat him unless we stay woke. Matter of fact, I might upload this video again tonight after I log out so y'all can listen to it and watch it in your house and listen to some real music with a real me with a real message. What a real message. You know what I want y'all to do? Especially in New York. These 40-year-old rappers and up. 40 and up. Ask these niggas where's they message at. 40, you are in the grave. 40, you are in the grave. You damn near got two feet in the grave when you 40 years old. You still ain't gonna save the youth? You still rapping about being a gangster? Talking about slime and cuz? See the cuz? Woody whoop whoop whoop. Throw these niggas in the trash. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and pay attention to your circle before they cause they smile in your face. All the while they wanna take your place. You're them backstabbers. All y'all niggas that thought I fell off. Which I ain't looking. Hold up. I think this screen is glitching. Hello? Is anybody home? Hello? You got two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you speak. Find you somebody that gives you a lyrical orgasm. When they speak, you listen 
because you can learn. Steel sharpens steel. If you listen to trash all day, you're going to become trash. If you listen to people who can enlighten you, you'll reach that next level. The next level is not about your finances. Money isn't everything. It's a survival tool. Everything ain't about money. Because if I could trade the little pennies that I have, the 99 cent that I got, to get back some of the people that's in the grave, or better yet, how many of y'all that's watching me right now, we got 4,700 people in the building, in four hours, we still got 4,700 people in the building. How many of y'all wish that y'all could take somebody that's living and trade them in for somebody that's in the grave? All our real ones is in the grave and dying. And we left with these suckers. If the black community... If the only thing that the people of the sun, us, my people, if the only thing that we have left, if the is is the fiftieth anniversary of hip hop, if the only thing that we have left is Harlem Week and Bronx Day in Atlanta, just throw the whole black community in the garbage. We failed. If the only thing that we have left is to take niggas like K. Slay and put a street in his name, so let me get this straight. Rest in peace, K. Slay. You're gonna put a street in his name, but his family don't own no, own none of the property on the block. His people don't own none of the property on a block, but they're going to put the name K. Slay, Big Pun, Big L on street corners and in a dictionary. The only thing that mean slave labor. <laughs> you just told the world that you's a union fucking worker that died. They didn't give you Harlem. They gave you a name on a block in Harlem to represent this is where white people even want to buy. They say they conquered you or they don't want to live because the property value is going down. And y'all celebrating that? Your ancestors didn't want to sign on a block. They wanted their land back. They gave you a fucking plaque on a pole where they kill you at. And y'all celebrating? Get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. Ain't nobody on this internet. If we don't see through the same eyes, man. We don't see through the same eyes. Go to bed.